is it Jim and Chris maybe? Uh, Chris Kelly. Uh, Jim, is, the Jim is there. Yeah, Jim, okay. Jim Winnegar is here, and Chris Kelly is my friend from uh, that I met in England, and we uh, hung out for okay. a while. So, speaking okay. of which, so he's also uh, he's also someone who uh, who might because uh, this is a very interesting part of uh, well, full of conjecture. So you're always welcome to interject, Chris. Uh, you know, if you have something to say. So, anyway. it's like guys, I had me and Neil had a long talk, and I had to like brief him first of what I was talking about with Michael Armstrong. And we all see that they're different Saturnian models, if you will. And uh, and deep conversation with Michael, man, like it, essentially, you know, David Talbot released his version of it, which had Jupiter behind Saturn. And they all didn't necessarily agree with that, but he wanted to put that model out. And there are other catastrophist Saturn models within the same group, even Cardona, Michael Armstrong has his and his different information. Everybody has slightly different takes on it. So, you know, it's, we talk about this stuff all the time. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into a thing where we're like dissing like Talbot's model or, or anything like that, because it's still important. And what happens is over time, just like Velikovsky made a, a misconnection with Jupiter. Well, these guys see where they make errors as the science improves. Welcome to the July 28th edition of the Electric View. I'm Neil Thompson. Today we have Sean, Jim, Chris, Buddy, Rick, Ramon, and Gareth. We are discussing the different developments in plasma or electric mythology and how these sites in the heavens affected the people and civilizations on Earth. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Okay, so this is this is from the presentation I did in 2017 at the AKHA, and I'm just going through, and then I can go back to anything. Of course, these are all Lichtenbergs. You guys can see the Lichtenbergs. Um, these are two different pilot knobs. One's here in Kentucky, and the other one's in, uh, I think, North Carolina. God. Uh, and then the, this is just some of my napkin math that I did before I actually wrote the paper. Um, looking at how much power is that's not accurate though so but it's still really powerful stuff no that um, was the pictures were amazing like that's yeah, the I'll type of stuff that we wanted to talk about like um you what are this. some of these things and, and we see them like some some clearly like the the dating of them that's one of the things that we're gonna have to really discuss like and that's because we have um rock art that puts some of these um some of these Waterman configurations, very, very old. And if we go back further, we have the Aleutian hand axe, which was just basically like a blunted comet. Um, so that's another one. But when you put- Yeah, Squatterman is apparently 20,000 years old from David Talbot's and Wallace's point of, earlier point of view. Well, um, but, well, we, but we also have we to look at the say, Venus figurines certainly, too, though. We can certainly say the cosmic hill motif or cosmic mountain it goes definitely back to the the Antil Atlantean period, if not to the you know the antiquated stuff from before mankind was considered culturally modern. That is using symbology. So it may be that the cosmic mountain was the origin of symbology, despite Graham Hancock thinking he was doing drugs. Well, we think that the Atlantis was the cosmic mountain. The it may be. Mount Olympus, all of that. Well, I don't want to spend too much time on whether or not there was a real Atlantis. I think there's, uh, that's a whole well, different I think, paper I have. I, I, I think uh, the, 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 the legends of Atlantis are attributed to a civilization that was before probably. us. Like I say, and I don't want to... given the name Atlantis, and the confusion was the pillars of Hercules are the Gibraltar, Gibraltar Straits, but they're not really the Gibraltar Straits. They were in the sky, in the heavens, that connection with Mars. You've been listening the, to me too the much. Pillars. Very, very well could no, be. I, no, it's okay. Uh, it's really good. I was, I was like, wow, he's listening to me. But still. So which uh, part did you, you just want to start with the middle? Because I don't think we need to. I mean, here's the. here's. The, well, we went over this with the stamp of the foot and uh, all that and the sitting above. So. Uh, here are some of the, you know, from the Rock Art of Kentucky, and you can see, I mean, very specifically, the synchrotron, <laughs> you know, and, and of uh, course, this yeah. really interesting squatter man. Um, 
Uh, I think it's also fascinating. Their their you can see fingers. Of the, the spirit world uh, and how I mean it's very obviously plasma. Can you There's nothing can you point out the synchrotron to me? Because I don't see it. I don't. I I see just. Oh, okay. All right, gotcha. Okay, but uh, the the thing that I I want to start with is I think the origin of religion, where they have this. Uh, view and there's no other reason to to carve this particular uh, glyph with without like in nature there's just not really anything that approximates this kind of shape you do have eyeballs but these hexagons um, which repeat over and over again as far as China and Kentucky which are exactly the opposite sides of the world and then with this carefully uh, carved away and then it, it, to give that embossed feeling or ba, like a bas relief of uh, this obvious partial hemisphere. And I want to point out something about the partial hemisphere. It, when you look at a, a, a sphere that's far away and it has contour, you wouldn't see all the way to the equator. You would see part of the, of the contour but not all the way to the equator. And they've captured that concept really well here in this rock. I mean, obviously the, the top of the, the dome of it and the further to the right is, you know, level. And then they've, they've carved it out here. And I think that that indicates also that when they were looking at the pole of Saturn, that they were seeing the depth into the cloud layers. But uh, unfortunately, rock is not uh, very... I, I imagine this was probably painted with, with dye and color. I mean, it's obviously long gone by now. But being in a rock shelter, uh, the erosion factor is not too bad. It could be worse, let's just say. And, and I, I, for me, when I see this, I see the one sphere. To me, it looks very obvious that that is... Uh, Heracles, right? Mars. I now, would generally one, agree. This one, the Reedyville um, petroglyphs, also have a number of the motifs. But I think that this, that you know, when this was carved, of course, the picture is in the book for the actual carving. You can't hardly see much, so they had to do rubbings to get this all off of there. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah. But this, I think, depicts several different eras. Of events, um, and this on the the left, the the uh, squatter man now facing and and going from one to another is very straightforward. There's there's not really a, a lot of ambiguity here. Now I think that the the bottom left is a depiction of Janus, the two faced god, and the question is, what is the triple? What is the the what is often depicted as a smile? Um, also is the owl face. What are those three? It might be Mars, Venus, and the moon. I, I don't I don't honestly know. I'm not sure if this is a constellation around it, but uh, this X this X sign is a, a Colbrin and Chinese plasma glyph and it and it does relate to the swastika and it appears related to the great winds. Because there's a reference to winds in the Colbrin, and um, the X is uh, in the center of the word wind in Chinese. Yeah, they Raymond, let me ask a question. Go ahead. Would, would, what is, and this is for everybody, would Squatter Man have been limited to the connection between Mars and Earth? Or would it have been portrayed in the connection between Mars and Venus as well. Look, Squatter Man's down here. Oh, look, Squatter Man's up there. Um, this kind of looks like maybe Joel, the Joel, uh, Jupiter coming in to the Saturn and bringing all kinds of its planets with it and starting to causing the devastation. Maybe we're watching Squatter Man coming off of Mars going towards Jupiter. It may be because we do know that Mars does have um, 
that excavated North Pole, North Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so it very well may be that that this is Mars uh, on approach to us, and and uh, this this figure, the Squatter Man, has also been interpreted a number of ways as a five-legged lizard, a five-legged turtle. Um, I've seen alligator. five. Uh, yeah, the alligator. I've seen uh, deer. All our lizard floating off the back. Yeah, all I our mean, lizard legends come from that. I'm I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, and then of course we see the Alwyn sign, which is the owl, uh, the creator, preserver, destroyer, and you can see the asymmetric nature, which is what started me on the path of writing the the longer paper. Speaking of which, about that that alone, that is one of the things that um, was ne- was noticed about about uh, Jano Cook as well when when he was talking about the illusion hand axes. One of the things that he brought up about them. Now these are these are stones that are roughly teardrop shaped. Always the point, however, is off to one side a little bit. No one knows why. They thought that they threw these into herds of animals and tried to break animals' backs with it because they find that they found them like as as if people had thrown them into the dirt, um, sticking up. But this uh, that was sort of like this that shape right there. The one that you Which were, one? the one right there. This? Yeah, they sort of have that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that uh, skull shape, but it's not with the eyes or anything, and with the mouth, but it's slightly over to one side more than it is to the other side. That was noticed, and all of these Lucian hand axes were carved that way, and these are supposed to be before the Venus figurines ever came about. So the age of some of these is. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about and bring together, but well, you also it, want to talk about religion, so well, I don't know which one to start with first. <laughs> well, no, it, it, you can't you can't talk about um, religion without talking about these origins because religion being a technology and movement, a current of movement, and in sinology they've switched from purely talking about epochs and dynasties to talking about currents. And the well, idea it's reaction, is it's a reaction have, to the natural world around them. Sorry for yes, interrupting. Yeah, it, 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 the whole point of a current is that you have different people in different places who are reacting to their environment and coming up with theories. And then when they meet and they confluence together, the uh, it becomes a more advanced philosophy. And so, for example, you end up with Taoism and Confucianism and um, legalism, etc., and these in, start to influence each other, and they start twisting around each other, just like Brooklyn Current would. And these currents become then stronger, and at some point, then you start to see a movement in government, and then institutionalization, education. Uh, of course, you see in Chinese and Chinese medicine, etc. Well, I think that the same thing would have happened really everywhere around the world. There would have been these different currents where people focus on different part of the myth. And then in different epochs, they worship different things. I think I think there's a, a tendency for some areas in the Middle East, for example, to to moon worship, whereas others might Venus worship. And the two would then influence each other rather than be separated. We have a tendency to separate these into, right. okay, these are the Phoenicians and these are the uh, Galicians and these are the Hebrews. But I don't think that that's how it really actually worked at all. They would have developed initially – um, in their own pockets, and they would have had names. Once the gods were gone, uh, they would have assumed that they were actually different gods, and then everybody's gods were demons except for their own personal ones. But uh, in the beginning, they would have understood, okay, when you say such and such god's name, who is that really? And they would have made exchange uh, with those gods' names, and they would have combined the theories and the stories and that's why they start to become confusing because now Gilgamesh, for example, becomes a collect-all for several different myths. Um, and we see this in the yes. Nordic traditions where Thor and Tyr actually end up overlapping each other. Although we have a day for, for Tyr on Tuesday and we have a day for Thor on Thursday and we have a day for Odin on Wednesday, um, all three of them share a lot of of the same properties as far as the the power of the thunder. And I think that's really uh, very fascinating. And and yet they did each, usually they start in different places and then they start to combine. I think a great example is how Babylon 
and Zoroastrianism and and uh, the Greeks all influenced each other, and then the Romans sort of then be they had their own tradition, and then started to borrow from the Greeks and combine them into one grand tradition. And so the tendency of us to we want it to be this happened this time and this happened this time, but going back we have to kind of untwist and remove all the agendas and all of the. I guess the institutionalization of things that happened after the Hellenistic era, because the the Hellenistic era is when the religious period was uh, just in its in its infancy. And well, yes, because they were. If this is my opinion on that, if uh, this, the the uh, the things in the sky weren't happening anymore, and people had started calming down, uh, people think that this probably started around the fourteen hundred BC, but around seven hundred BC was when the last of the events occurred. Like that was the last flare up, right. the last right. of any event that we've ever seen. The skies are now the same. They were no longer, we don't longer have huge auroras sticking out of everything. That's right. Uh, things are calmed down. Periodically things were flaring up, but they were calm, long periods of calm. And so after that- But it was still, it's interesting though, because the, the periods, the transitions between the periods sort of, um, and in particular that era being the transitional period, tend to be uh, dominated by these these eras of the constellations. Well, that's... Um, and that, that being the age of Aries at that time. Well, yes. And, and, we were bringing and soon well, to end. But we're... Well, sim- simply said, everything is connected to everything else. Why would people be able to make YouTube videos out of nothing theories and they sort of make sense? Yeah. Well, because they can, we because could they probably can make, do that. But. Because they can make many connections. They can make many connections yeah. and make it make sense. But okay. it doesn't really go anywhere. Okay. Well, that's what well, we're trying to does, avoid. It does yeah. when it does. I'm not talking when... about us. I'm talking about, I'm talking about other people like um, the tattooed monkey and his math and, and other people okay. that are, well, without... are bas- basing their stuff on occult stuff. And well, without basing naming, stuff, you know. Without naming any names, what I can say is when, whenever they make a connection that actually connects to the, these original currents, not only do they hit on the truth, even though it may be limited by uh, – like the window is closed at a certain period because after the age of Aries, the gods were not seen except for the moon um, and the sun, but also – uh, they, because of those cataclysms and because of religion, religion having to do with controlling people and ending the Dionysian behaviors all around the world, uh, and Basically, to, to get rid of all uh, the war, to get rid of all the destruction, they had to control people, and so they had to burn all the pagan stuff. And that was everybody was burned in pagan stuff. It wasn't yeah, only stopping in, in the, the first the firstborn West. sacrifices and the and the yeah. really bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, actually, the place there's that more that than that. Happen, but still, the, yes, the place that the, the place that that didn't happen happens to be in America, and they continued to have the original. And this is where, when the Spanish met them, religion came into conflict with the oh, the origins of religion. And uh, that I find really fascinating because you see two different currents of thought and how incompatible vibrations of thought. Well, the Vatican uh, looked at the South American stuff and they looked at the stuff from Samaria and it, and they matched up like and they said, well, well, we have to destroy this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it may have been that conscious. It may have been very primal within them, too. Um, but the the point being that the origins speak to a commonality and yeah that there are different names for different things but uh this is that one language that that everybody could speak and then the tower yeah. of babel falls and and then no, nobody's speaking that common language and now but them the, trying to then i think your birth your birth of religion comes from those periods of quiescence between the uh, yes, events that occurred, and they were going right. to try to tell their next generation that in 15 years or something, he's at like a four-year-old kid, and Grandpa is screaming at him about the shit that he saw in the sky. And he's going, "Dude, dude, freaking dude!" And he's like, "Mom, freaking Grandpa's going nuts." He goes, "Yeah, but he's it right." Have taken that long? No. It wouldn't have even taken that long because of a, a, a couple of plagues, and and it didn't take long before 
Socrates was busy, you know, displaying corrupting the doubts youth. of the gods and he was corrupting <laughs> the youth. But they they still had, and he was in he was prime in that transition period because yes. the, the megalithic period was was over. And the transition period was all about um, how, how was mankind going to live at that time, and a lot of our our favorite philosophies come from the end of the transition period and the beginning of the religious period and that junction. And many people still think of oh, oh Lao Tzu created Taoism. No, Lao Tzu and Buddha uh, existed at a junction midway between where we are. And where this stuff came from, or not even midway, probably, you know, just, uh, you know, a quarter of the way back. But basically speaking, midway, if, we, if we're just going back to the deluge. And so, yeah, they, all, midway they period, all spear from about the same period, the 700 BC right. era, 1400 to 700, you know, right. that era. Now, at that time, they wouldn't have had libraries um, to, to just hand off to each other. But learned men would have known what each other were talking about. Yes, um, and and, and it then would, and it would fall apart. And th but that's the quickly. cool that's the cool thing where a man could go to a different uh, country, and he would just have to point at certain things in the sky, and then yes. we would you'd be you'd be already knowing their story. You're half the, now, you're halfway there. I want to point out on this rock the difference in aging between the same archetype on the right and on the left, and that also you have the sea hinge. Uh, shape that is essentially um, here, I believe, is a carving of both the thunderbolt stamp and also uh, kind of capturing that Saturnian uh, eye with with the center. But you look at the bridge that's going between them. Uh, I think they were they were recording two different things, but I think this one may have actually been in the sky. It looks to be to me to be the same age as the one on the right. And yes. it's a similar formation. What's fascinating is I've never seen this anywhere else. That the le the what would be the right eye of the face, what's left to us, actually has this offshoot going up into the left. I've not seen that anywhere else. Now on the left, this funny little smile face shows uh -huh. up in Egyptian. Yes, it does. Uh, as 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 well, and I'm sure that uh, Sean recognizes that. Um, that's a pretty famous uh, hieroglyph. Why was it pounded more? In the ch at the chin area of that one, I, I noticed in both of them they both have a. No, that's that's upraised. Okay. So it's sorry. Yeah. So these are so so it's the in the center is carved out, and the chin is what's been left, and so the, this may be. I was trying to watch it. Cosmic reverse, hill. So. It may be the cosmic hill, and it's to the same on the on the right as well. And what's interesting is it's highly elliptical. You look at these ones; these are highly elliptical. Well, I also noticed that uh, this one, Highly the elliptical. one on the right, had a had a had a had a bridge leading downwards, which could be the tongue hanging out. It could be. Um, that's it, it, notice on that side. It's sort of off to one side. On the le on the left hand side, one it looks like it's coming off to one side. Um, perhaps more like the eye of Ra, um, if you know what I mean. Yeah, there does appear to be something, some material coming out of the cosmic. It's over on the other one too. That's here. why I brought it yeah, up. Yeah, it is. It is. It's going off to the left. But like it, it appears the the do younger you, one. Oh is God, longer. not him. The, do you the think longer this one may be? Do you think this may be the capture of Venus by into the polar configuration? It, it, it may very well be, or it could come from the era when when. Um, when they were mating, right? And in, in some cases, Mars was a babe suckling at breast, and in some cases, they were two lovers mating at night. Um, but right, it could have this, been... this reminds me of Wallace saying, Venus came out of the southern hemisphere of Saturn, and I would imagine that it would have some momentum, but the power of the Birkeland current that we were connected to drew it back into, the, into alignment. And this may be part of that as it was being birthed out, then it was being pulled back in and it had this shell around it, this electric, uh, is, it's, it's it, comet-like shell around it. And from it, what I remember of, I know, just a thought. Uh, from, what I, from what I remember of Eve Cochran's talk, he mentioned that nightly they would court, which would tell me that there was an orbit and as they would come close at night, they would begin to glow 
uh, as they approached each other for the mating. Um, then it is also said in the Greek myths that, that Athena and Ares battled three times before uh, Zeus sent her away. But I think that the, the nightly courting is more reliable because the Babylonian myth is um, probably more reliable than the Greek oral tradition. Um, that's just my Well, opinion. it's older, so yeah. It is older, and it was also put on clay, and that's a, that's a big difference. A little, one thing before I scroll, scroll on this one. Yeah, it's probably here. more detailed too. So. Look, we have the rays uh, coming off of uh, here, but it could also just be um, it could be the shell motif. But uh, it's not really clear what this one on the right is. But the left is very clearly the the Eau, uh, Awen, and we still aren't one hundred percent sure what that is. It 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 could be uh, plasma streamers going between different bodies, but not clear. Now everybody recognizes the one on the left. Yes. Um, yeah, well, on the right here, we see also uh, these bodies approaching each other, carved into stone here, again, in Kentucky. And all of these are, because they're contained under rock shelters, they they will last a lot longer. Um, the ones down there in Peru are lasting because it's so dry. Right. And, and there's not a lot of that bacteria to lay across. There. Right. Exactly. Um and here, uh, some people are thinking that these on the left are the rings of Jupiter and Saturn. I think that that's probable, but it could be also double layers uh, around. We see the double layers pretty strong on this one. And then you see the labyrinth, of course, the cosmic labyrinth. Actually, if you... Oh, you mean in the sky, that one to the uh, lower yeah. right, yes. Yeah. The yeah. the rings that you were showing, right there, yes. Um no, no, right, yeah, this one, yeah. Uh, where they were that symbol with the two doing battle uh, with a line connected. By the way, if you notice, there's a line between them. Yeah, um, that ha was also in Mormonism, uh, obviously a uh, big thing with uh, Joseph Smith. Apparently, uh, was this connected bunch of circles. But if you notice, there's also a Taurus in each one of those. There's a Taurus in the top one, two dots. And there's a Taurus in the bottom one, two dots. Now, oh, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I was a betting man, then I would go to that. If you know that picture of Jupiter, which has the um, very large, I'll, I'll just get it myself. But if, it's the one I put in my video with the uh, two. You could see the Taurus around Jupiter. How uh, how strong it was. Is there, is there not two bumps in between the two Tauruses as well? Uh, I don't really. I pre I perceive no. two bumps there. Well, I'm not, I wasn't trying to go right into it, but in the very middle would be the planet. I'll, uh, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just actually, I can drag and drop this right into a conversation. I mean, you can just, okay. yeah, which I'll show you the picture. You know what I'm talking about the moment you see it. Okay, that one there. So when you see that, I'm seeing then, uh, yeah, that picture. Um, well, it's right off to the side there. You can, uh, you know where it is. It's just under the, in the conversation piece. Uh, go down to the lower right corner of your screen. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah. yeah but, Driving me crazy. I know. It's, but you'll find it right there, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I picture then, in the middle would be the ball. Jupiter and Saturn would have that. They'd have these wings on either side, which is the Taurus, right. very bright, which they depict as those two circles inside of the other circles, which are expanding and many times larger than the planet itself, the coma of Jupiter and the coma of Saturn. And for them to be connected and shooting lightning bolts at each other is not unexpected either. If this, this would have been the most significant event and something to go hide in a cave when you saw, because the gods, this is the Clash of the Titans. This is the end right. of the world type stuff for the people right. who are who were it's quite quite possible that the people who were literally carving that died in that event you know like this would have been the flood one of the floods so, so it very well could be that what's being depicted here is what you're saying could be the actual chaining of Cronus. yes uh and being attacked by and and basically under becoming under the influence of jupiter and they stayed connected right. as they and flew Jupiter's out into moons. space well, yes, but they would have been within inside that Taurus. They would it wouldn't even be a consideration. Just like 
when you look at the sun, you only see the sun. And if we were looking and electrically, you could only see the sun's influence and the heliopause. But inside of that is where all this gravity occurs, which is the argument that Jim was having with Eugene with regards to figuring that out, pushing gravity, pulling gravity, electrical influence, what is the boundary layer, yada, yada. So there's, oh, well, there you go. That one right there is blows well, think, me away. I, I think these are, um, uh, you know, thunder the Thunderbirds. I think it's probably from the Venus Cataclysm, or what I like to call the Exodus Cataclysm, because it gives us a kind of a rough dating. Um, but that's Peru, and then you can see the uh, the Ohio River Valley version. That is something that's also noted, by the way, uh, not only in Greek myth, in Babylonian myth, but also by Julian James in the breakdown of that backhammer of mind. Uh, you, I still, you skipped over it, but I love that image that you went back. Yeah, that, no, the one in the middle that you keep skipping over, <laughs> that one. <laughs> but uh, Russia, Russia on the left and um, Utah, I think, on the right. It might by, be by, by the way, has anybody seen the Jewish antiquities symbol, the, the, the official uh, Jewish uh, Israeli um Oh, um, are you trying to say menorah? Because no. <laughs> it looks like a menorah. Um, yeah. Just a second, I'm, I'll try and bring it up. Okay, yeah, it's fine. But, but anyway, what, to finish my thought. Point, point, hold, oh, go uh, ahead. No, I'll let you go before first. Before we before we move before we move off of uh, Siberia, note that these look exactly like runes, and some yes. of these are exactly Colbrin runes. In particular, this is uh, this one here is the High Lord, the L for Ukel. It's the it's the the one that is used in the High Lord. So you can see that in my paper. And then of course here we have the this this uh, four suns beneath the cross is in the Chinese glyphs as well. That also is very uh, interesting. Not only the fact that they were drawn several times, okay, but differently. Notice that they it's like perhaps they were trying to say because this giant man here with the multiple heads. Uh, yeah. with his arms now going downwards, um, combined with the Saturn symbol and obviously a Christmas tree uh, type effect yeah. um, yes. with the runes tells me that this was uh, stupendously more local. Uh, this is where this, this issue comes in of, uh, of, of trying to, uh, to date something like this large cataclysm that came and how it would have been reminding the people that it's happened before. Yes. Those elders would have... Renewing remember, their, we, we haven't destroyed right. the earth yet. This is before pro, the, the last flood, the, the one that started right. the Silver Age. Right. So this is these people would, would have, have had... The, they would have remembered it. And as far as I understand, the Siberia I mean, stuff It's still been, remembered today. I mean, look what yes. Jim's work managed to get all the way. Imagine the tight, tight, tight little hole that that information had to squeeze through at one time. Like at 3000 BC, the entire world is getting destroyed. Four people in the entire world remembered that, and it managed to get all the way back through them to him. That well, and, blows my and mind. The reason why it works <laughs> is because of the stamp, the imprinting on the cultural DNA, and and every time someone hits on it, it's a huge success. Like Star Wars and Dragon Ball, these are huge success because they hit on the same motifs that have existed for a long time because the monkey uh, the is not... Yes. The, the archetype of the monkey king is not a Japanese archetype. It's not a Chinese archetype. It goes all the way back to India and right back into the Rig Veda. So these, these events uh, being passed forward. But I think that this Siberian stuff has been, has been dated and it is somewhere, I think it's in the 16,000, 18,000 range. I don't know about these glyphs. But um, a lot of those sites have been dated to that ancient period, and it it points to long-term occupation. I, um, I dropped a link, Raymond, so if you want to click on that, it'll show you the ant Israeli antiquities. I tell you what, let me, let me get uh, through the rest of these, and then we'll pull that up, because uh, that way I don't have to keep making it small and making it big. So 16,000 um, years, that's... Uh... That that might imply then that this is even well, older. They, a lot of these sites. No, what I'm saying. A lot of like take new, newspaper rock. These sites were used like this was the place to go, and it may even been like the Dogon, where this is where the astronomer lived, 
and then kept etching the changes over time so that it tells a whole story. And unlike the Hindus, not everybody sang it. Um, sometimes they, you know, they would remember the story with pictures and then they would teach it to their disciples. Um, and, oh, oh, and they yes. had a way of going through. We, we also so should it's, it's essentially a book, but what the, on the right, what we're seeing here, this is a, this is essentially the equivalent of a chapter of a book. Definitely. You know, or maybe several chapters. Uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. One of the things is, I mean, we do this all the time in real life where we point to things on walls and continue to recite tales, but we also have the significance issue of, uh, what, uh, well, we have to remember that these people remembered things a lot better than we do. Uh, it's, it, it has to be noted that uh, uh, human beings, even from a few hundred years ago, have a phenomenally better memory, uh, especially when it comes to certain things. And uh, they usually use uh, little tricks to help their memory. And this is only from a few hundred years ago, uh, where the illiterate could still represent each other in hearings, the word hearing alone, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, but it comes from, it, it still was very prevalent. These people had fantastic memories and could remember, oh yes, that happened when I was uh, two. Uh, this mm -hmm. came out of here. Do you remember this? And people would like, this is how you basically get evidence and such. But going back in time, these people could tell an oral tradition that would be incredibly long and it would, they'd still hold on to it. Uh, much better than you'd think so, th that we would. It'd be like, um, how well, I mean, it would be phenomenally better than me and Ramon together could retell Star oh, Wars. By far, by far. <laughs> now, you know. I want to point out something in this, this uh, series of petroglyphs. You see how the north is actually going this way? Well, if you were to rotate this image around, these two spirals would occupy roughly the same position as in the Ramses delay. So they would occupy, they would swing around, and they would kind of sit on top of each other, just like in the Ramses delay. Now, I think that this is an example, again, of several different events being recorded in the same place. Well, um, with all example, those little chicken the, feet, yeah. Yeah, well, not just that, but the boat. These, these spirals, I think, were probably carved at one period, and the number four and five of Venus and Mars exchanging these rocks and the Valkyries at battle, I think yeah. is a different era completely. So it goes to my point that the, and, and this is something that you already have said, that these religions would be renewed at each epoch. So this belief in the, the new sun or the repetitious cycles is, as Jim has pointed out, it's not a matter of calculation. It's a matter of when these events would happen the the old memories would be revived. The elders could berate the young for not knowing their ancestry. Then they would get an influx of new disciples uh, who would, and of course, there'd be a lot of new breeding because mankind would be low. They would sing these songs and they would they would renew the family bonds and the traditions uh, of of their people right. who were left. But then every time that happened, every individual group would bifurcate from the original uh, human current that had witnessed these things. So this one-time Atlantean civilization, which more or less, even if they spoke different languages personally, they all were talking about sacred numerology and about the things in the sky, would eventually become uh, very uh, differentiated by being isolated after each time there's a die-off. And then when they come back, their version of the story would be slightly different, and it would happen over and over and over again until eventually the roots of religions become extremely unique and yet retain a core, not just the archetypes, but some of the core principles between them, such as the principle of in the Egypt of uh, Ka, the energy soul, right. is also present in the Hebrew tradition and in, and in India and in Native America and in China. It is a it is a continual um, belief in this energy. Of course, it's based in something real as well. Yeah, um, and the yeah. core meaning is is lost to time. Well, Sometimes it's lost, but but most of the time it's surprisingly well kept. But it becomes then in the religious period wrapped around uh, the kingship because the kingship um, becomes heavy. Because originally the kingship was a, a a a burden. Sometimes there were some cultures that even would kill their kings. Um, as a sacrifice, 
And yes. certainly if, yes. if you did not, if you did not uh, make it rain as a king, you could die. Well, they, uh, but, but later they would on, also, it but they would heredity. also, uh, they would also do crazy things. Like, for example, uh, I'm just going to be short here. They would also uh, put someone they didn't like. They knew an eclipse was coming up, and eclipses were bad. For example, so because uh, the sun went out, obviously, and uh, what would happen is they would kill their king off. They know the kings tend to notice this, uh, so they would appoint someone to be the temporary king uh, to uh, basically get killed off, ritually. And then would be reconnected, uh, or basically the old king would be brought back. The sun would come out again, and uh, three days later they would kill the, the kill that prisoner who was the king, and the prophecy was fulfilled. And they continue on. Well, I would submit that uh, what's hap what was hap the dynamic that was happening there is the kings were tired of dying off. They're, they're, the the aristocratic families that were tied to them, they were family. So what they did is they made a priestly class and, and they separated themselves from being priests and kings into a kingship I, class and a priestly class. I don't think that, that that it was such a conspired event. What I think is more likely uh, to have happened is that you had tribes um, and some of them knew the writing through the scripts and the bones and they knew the stories. And over time, only those who sat around telling the stories would remember it. And then when a, a bad war or pestilence or anything happened, you would have migrants and these migrants would come in. They wouldn't know the stories. And so they would enter into the tribe and only the family that had been there for a long time, the chief uh, related family, no matter it was a direct lineage or not, would have known those stories and they would have passed those on eventually becoming writing Right. And now becoming heredity, and heredity then becoming power, um, and that power reinforces a need. But then, as we differentiate and differentiate, yeah, there would become a need for during the religious period for specialists. In China, we know it pretty well. Actually, the the original shamans uh, called Wu were usurped by the astrologers. Uh, who were then usurped by the strategians, who were usurped by the legalists, who were usurped, usurped by the Taoists, who were then usurped, <laughs> usurped by the Buddhists. That actually then, sounds very similar to some of the instances in, like, Italy. <sighs> yeah, it's basically, and then by the time you get to the Buddhists, you're talking uh, the equivalent of the Dark Ages in Europe. And so then the power of the priesthood uh, in the religious period becoming... Uh, is, is the power of the religion becoming so much stronger because religion is a lot more durable than government. And, yes. and so it remains for a long time until the scientific period is able to, to start. Uh, its, its currents began beginning in the Renaissance uh, and, and then coming to, into the Enlightenment period. So, um, Well, I, you're absolutely right. I can't deny what you... But one of the things that immediately pops up is thinking about the uh, way that when events happened, okay, when things were ordered and things were very nice in the, in what we'll call the golden age, things were fantastic. But when you hit a certain, uh, when, when everything went to hell and people were scared, well, retellings of that story over and over again, of course, people, every single event was going to be the big one and they were scared to death. When the sun went off, when the sun shut off, they freaked out. Now that's when they started killing people and stuff like that. Um, when things did not go right. So priests and kings had to sort of get their shit together and make sure that they were on the same page to make sure the society kept functioning. Um, because a lot of people weren't fully conscious, as we've talked about before. So when if a huge events occurred, um, they they would react to them. They, if they saw something in the sky that was looked like something well, exploding, they, they're going to freak out. And it's... Okay, uh, let's... Let's take the the Hebrews for example. It would be pretty hard for them if they if they did come from Sumer and they enter the Egyptian uh, kingdom, and then they encounter this incredibly advanced priestly class. It would be very hard for them to compete in those stories, and it'd be very easy for them to end up being marginalized. And while the priestly class and heredity would stay at the top, and that oh, would happen to the Sea Peoples. First, totally understand. Totally understand. Any that, yeah. any any kind of migrating civilization, 
um, that they would, uh, not knowing the language, they would not be capable of dealing with the legalese. Because it, it is religion, but it was used legally. And in, in, in this, we see this in the Welsh tradition. What would happen is if you ticked off the early Christian church, um, they would actually bar the king from entering heaven. So, for example, if he killed uh, for, uh, Tudric, he killed his brother in order to consolidate his king his kingship. So, what they did was they disowned they they uh, excommunicated him, and after a few years, he gave a land grant, and it's all in the land of charters. So you right. can go to Landuff and actually read about these events, and and they say, okay, well now he's been you know. Uh, elevated to the level of a saint. So how can you go from being excommunicated, excommunicated to being level of a saint? And money. because of money <laughs> do, and power, we, we do that all the time. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Well, no, no, I, I meant, I meant in these, uh, these, a, a priesthood well, of the reli of the scientific class. I meant how can you go from being a clerk to being a saint? In uh, the case well, of Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we still have we still have these ways of these modes of operation, and it's hard to change a mode of operation because human biology dictates that we usually prefer things we first encounter, unless we hate it right away. If you hate grapefruit right away, it's very difficult for you to like it later. Uh, it is. But, but <laughs> if, if, you, if you have a favorable impression, like, like kids and s'mores, you'll think of fond, fondly of that, and even if it doesn't work for you anymore, you'll go back to doing it. In exercise, this happens all the time. Many men, they want to get back in shape, they start doing push-ups. It's actually usually not a good idea now that they're out of shape. But uh, it is a behavior that we are just used to doing. When we, when we don't know, we fall back on what we do know on the assumption that tradition and wisdom, or that there is wisdom in tradition automatically. And that's not necessarily true because um, even with wisdom traditions, like say the Masons, it's not 100% clear that the Masons understand what, they, what they're actually preserving. Uh, no, and it, they clearly don't the, in many cases. With, without the Vatican vaults, how would they possibly know? And that's why it was funny, that guy, he gets into the Vatican vaults, he starts directly translating the Bible, and they freaked out, and they kicked him out because it was too scary to think about that, that if, him translating from the, the Aramaic would threaten the Latin translations that came from Greek. Well, it's more much likely that they didn't, uh, they don't coincide. And we've had, I mean, you've seen what happens when these people do that. Um, they, they, uh, I mean, they do not respond well to challenges to beliefs, especially when everything hangs on their belief. And that became doubly, uh, I mean, in the same situation in Europe, uh, we have with China. Now, of course, we don't know what was going on in the Americas per se in this particular time zone, but in the, the Pope became sort of like, um, ruler over things like the emperor of Europe, where, where. Again, the religious class was still ruling over the rulers, you know, and but they had, but hey, we can make the predictions with our clocks that you need to not get killed, okay? You know, and that's kind of, you know, the things that they were, they were playing on these things, the superstitions of the people. We create the superstitions. Yes. We well, can in Tibet, Ray Monk, still, can you, still could you, could you go back to the, Jewish antiquities antiquities page. Sorry, I want to explain something to everyone here and everyone going to be watching this. This is Squatterman. Obviously, we see the two tori around the waist and the feet and the yeah. appendage down below the the legs. The top, the very top candle, is referred to by the Jewish people as the Shamash candle. What other huh. <laughs> what other what other civilization has the name Shamash? Right, the Sumerians. Yeah, and what is the Shama, What is Shamash to the Saturn. Sumerians? It's Saturn. Saturn. It's the clearly. polar. It's the polar configuration. Clearly, it's it's Saturn, Venus, and Mars. All three of them. See, and all I see is a caricature of a very upset Cleon. So. <laughs> Well, but it's important too. We see the symbol of of the lower part of the thunderbolt. Um, That's the basilisk that he fights with. No, I'm just kidding. Keep going. And, and, but it's also, 
it's also the Yao again. Yes, it is. So that the the Alwyn glyph, and you'll find in some cultures the Alwyn glyph faces down and sometimes up, and sometimes in the same culture, down and up. In the Welsh uh, Colburn runes, you'll see both down and up. And it might be because they had imported um, from Scandinavia and Germanic peoples, they imported some of it. And there is a lot of talk, of course, of the Germanic stuff being influenced by the Aryans uh, who had established a powerful enough empire to go all the way from India to um, Germany. And so there could have been a kind of like a West Silk Road, you know, not an actual Silk Road, but but a, a, a movement of, of uh, people along that uh, route. And smack dab in the middle of that would be the... Uh, Bosnian Actually, pyramids. <laughs> isn't it? I was going to say, isn't that the plot of the movie The Thirteenth Warrior, with it? Uh, where he has to go from Persia or Arab land, uh, Byzantium, is that the to one that's been, up uh, north to Norse? Yeah, culture? that's that's a. Uh, you know, it's funny that book. That's a Michael Crichton book, I it think is? originally. Oh, yeah, and um, it's it's the way he writes. You never know if he's saying that it really is based on a real. Arabic tale, because he says the following is based on an Arabic tale, but I don't know if it is, actually is or not, because his stuff is so well-researched that his fiction blends with, Reality. with science yeah. very, very, very easily. Um, so these are the periods that I, I roughly divided things in, and, and we're just starting from the biologically modern period. Uh, now, there have been some recent, and, and I can I can say pretty confidently that we're not out of the orders of possibility with 200,000 uh, years before present. There have been some recent uh, archaeological verifications in North America and South America alone at 180,000 years. And if these people are, you know, having fires and, and making tools, we can say pretty, pretty well that they're biologically modern, modern people. So I think that that's a reliable thing. 240,000 might be the stretch end. Um, but that's why I put it that way. Well, if we took every My... single building around from, like every building around us, anything that's not made of stone, okay, and we removed it from our society, uh, would we see any writing on any walls anywhere? No, we wouldn't. Generally not. Yeah. So I have a real problem with 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 carbon dating. I have a real problem with I being mean, interrupted and... all the time. There, big guy. Sorry. Well, they're, well, they're, <laughs> not, they're, they're not only. They're not only using carbon dating anymore. I want to no. make that very no. clear. They're, they're doing other things a, as well. Yeah, like several different kinds of dating. However, uh, they do tend to pick and choose in many cases, and the dates, just like parallax, does, as Jim would say, does not add up to the expected redshift distance. So, right. too, do, the, do these datings have ranges? And the further you go back, yes. they completely lose all coherency. Yes. Like, yes. uh, and I mean, just as we can attest to, they did tests on uh, l new lava flows and they did a new lava flow that just flowed out of uh, in Hawaii. They did a test on it. It's 130 million years old. So it's not obviously because it just flowed out there. It's still right, cooling. Right, so right. We, the, the, we definitely have to check that. But there are different points of contention, as we mentioned, ice core records and so forth, Greenland being the best. And it goes back apparently, down to these ages, some of them anyway. It, it, would, it would generally behoove us, though, to, to use their own research against them. Clearly. And so uh, that, that is why I've chosen these days. But it's obvious that everything is a range. Um, you know, for example, this Atlantean period might be as short as 20,000 years ago. Uh, the, the argument over Ganung Padang and the Bosnian pyramids and um, and Giza is, an, I think, an argument that will never be settled. And uh, you know, Sh uh, Sean is a deep studier of the Egyptian tradition. He could probably speak more to the King's List. Um, but the there are people who will maintain that that is a reliable list, and there are people who will say that these are just metaphor. And then you've got Randall Carlson saying that these are. Um, calculations that have more to do with uh, the diameter of the Earth and positions of constellations, and then and therefore, and they're not metaphor exactly, but it's kind of like metaphor. Um, and it, it it's it may be a completely unknowable uh, thing. Uh, hiding but... metaphor was something that we actually did see when we were at, uh, for example, 
we were at Wells Cathedral, which was built in the, I'm not quite sure exactly when, I think it was the 1500s or, oh no, 1200s. And the information that was codified into that work uh, in their, in their, um, in their works alone of the, uh, the way that the building is constructed and how they use angles and pillars and everything else to represent certain things that are uh, important are you talking to about Masons. Karnak? Uh, I was actually talking about Wells Cathedral because I just happened Wells to be Cathedral. yeah in in England. Uh, one of the things is it has like depictions of this is the sun, this is the moon. Here are all the planets. Here's how Earth is depicted, and uh, it, because of the angle between two pillars and stuff like that, so you get twenty three point five degrees, and it started, you could do number numerical calculations and all that kind of stuff. The Squatter Man is literally right in the middle of it. Like look right there, the Squatter Man is right smack dab. Well, not there. It's beautiful. Go up. Well, the, but, that's but the moon, look at, right there. Right, but you also do see the uh, Paradian yes. um, crown coming down. Yes, uh, uh, but if you go and look at the, uh, if you go look at that that very first one right there, yes, you can see the squatter man's right at the end of the hallway. Yeah, beautiful. And it's uh, and there's thirteen places. Each one has an angle from the front door of twenty three point five degrees between pillars. And then you have the you walk between those two pillars in the distance. If you noticed, you can see it from here. Uh, no, it's gone again. Um, if you were go back to the picture we were at there, sorry, I was describing it to people. Um, that one, yeah. Uh, if you look, I do. yeah, can you hear me? I can, I was, Chris. I was in Wells Cathedral last night. My mum was singing there. <laughs> well, nice. Well, there you can. Well, I went on a trip with. Uh, well. With that's how we went through the uh, to the drive to the Quantox. We stopped here, and we had a great presentation uh, that was done in a little room. And uh, he went over all of the uh, imagery here that we were going to see, and we got a chance to go through it. And I mean, just looking at this alone, but you can see how the cross in the background is sort of on the ceiling, and there are two pillars on either side of it, very tall. This is, I mean, you have a very interesting depiction of uh, a conjunction right there. Well, it's encoded memory. It's yes. very obvious that they had access to documentation that was both mythic and technical, and that the, that, that was then translated into a, a more contemporary use. They um, took it off of old symbology. During the, during the religious period. But it's funny because if you were to ask somebody in the religious period, uh, if they weren't the architect, right? If they weren't one of these, uh, you know, Templar architects or something, right? They would be. They would look at you like you were a pagan villain, and um, <laughs> you know, it took the scientific period for us to actually unlock what a lot of this stuff is really meaning. One, one of the things about the conversation, I, I don't know if you were there for that, Chris. Uh, let me know if you were. Uh, I, th I think you were only at the symposium. I, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I missed the uh, talk. There. Well, you would have you would have uh, loved the conversation just as as was being depicted. It was like, why is why is this room? The moon room it has an angle. There's twenty. There's exactly twenty seven steps to reach. Twenty set twenty seven and a third steps to reach uh, that moon room. But there's actually twenty nine steps in the whole thing, which of course we all, well, I shouldn't say we all know, but that's, it takes 27 and a third days for the moon to make one rotation around to the same star, but it takes 29 days to get, to rotate around back to where it was in the sky. Right. And this, right. yeah. this, that is encoded right on the stairwell. You know, that type of stuff is all yeah. part of the, yeah. of the structure of it. It's all built in. And it's like they were codifying the heavens into so, the ground, and that. Are you saying? Are you saying that the church was living in sin? No, what I'm saying is that one of the things <laughs> that he sin pointed was the out, name of the moon. <laughs> that's actually very interesting. But no, the, it's actually um, off to one side, which uh, which is cool. They literally the Wells Cathedral layout. I mean, the the right to straight to the sun, but the moon is off to one side, and it's sort of down one hallway, but. The, uh, the connection then he was pointing out was uh, sometimes you see the Christ on a, on a woman's lap and uh, she is supposed to be Mar the Mary Magdalene, of course. But then he was like, but this is actually goes back further than that because you see pictures of her without the baby. And that's actually Sophia where we get philosophy, 
Philosophia, the love of Sophia. So right. this is this is where the birth of it is, and it's odd that the church chose to separate her from the actual church. And philosophy went off in its own direction after that. Uh, the church no longer had control of it. It's like they almost gave up control over it, or or somehow drove it into the darkness so much that it could only exist in universities. <laughs> if well, you know what I mean. At some point, these currents, the whole point of, of uh, the understanding of currents in philosophy is that um, there are going to be pinches where everybody's coming together and they're institutionalizing, like, say, the London Historical Society um, or, or uh, uh, just a, a place where there's a lot of minds all working on the same, like MIT or something. Right. Okay. Could you click on the plan on, button, by the way? I'm sorry, what now? The plan button, the button, uh, second one in the button, uh, chapter host, and then plan is the buttons from the, yeah. There. That's all I wanted you to see so you can see the moon is off to one side. Please continue. Oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. It's octagonal. Oh, there's more. There's a hexagon, octagons, and a whole whack of things in there. Yeah. Uh, so when things loosen up again, um, you know, and this is a this is actually just the natural function of the universe, this reflected in human behavior, right? As right. a fractal of the universe. Uh, when it loosens up again, they're going to get these spirals and these little, uh, I guess, kind of side directions, side paths of philosophy, and some of them lead to new things, uh, which can be amazing, you know, like a like quantum. But um, many times they, of course, just end up in cults, uh, and it's interesting that cults keep forming. Because there is an innate need in mankind to try and tap into this this cultural uh, memory, which may actually be, if if Rick is right, these events, the electrical events, uh, would have affected the ether. The ether would have imprinted on our DNA as an antenna. Um, there is evidence that the junk DNA. Uh, in our DNA is a language because it conforms to something called Zipf's law. And that is one of those profound uh, ideas that we don't know what it means. Of course, the ancient alien people jump on it. It's, it's uh, obviously we've been programmed to behave a certain way, and it's the matrix and a simulation. But it's possible that um, what Rick is saying is, is true that these events actually would have not just given us ideas like, oh, this is a sword and this is a spear and this is a, a bow and arrow uh, and this is a house, but that they would have actually changed how we, how we think. And that goes back to, again, looking at this timeline where, in the early part of the timeline at least, where we had, we had physically modern humans for hundreds of thousands of years. So what changed at... 36 to 40,000 years ago. Um, it may have been that Jim's event happened, started to happen in the sky, and they actually saw the, the God who had just been there just as much as any tree. Right. When, you pass, when you just pass by a tree and it doesn't have a name, you, you don't pay attention to it. So if the God is always there and it's always right above you, it doesn't matter. It matters, though, if it starts glowing and making shapes up in the sky and there's suddenly... And coming that towards happening. you, uh, that that very well could be that it that it and, and there could have been now the the waters were being lifted up higher. Well, it could have been the Taurus ring the mist, of the Gould Belt, right? Maybe the maybe the sky became more misty or less misty. Um, oh yeah, they the, take notice of that. But you you've tapped onto something that I'm I'm very very interested in in regards to this change from the birth of. Um, or mytho well, actually, from the Golden Age to the birth of mythology, we'll call it the Silver Age. And then uh, all of that was just a, a plethora of, of things to talk about. Uh, we, we, we as humans learn concepts, but they, don't, they have to become part of our society before everyone's sort of cool with it. And it's not something that, uh, well, obviously, this is just basically how you learn words now but uh back then they were depicting things like those things on rocks and stuff so you couldn't help but imitate something so beautiful i'm sure that i mean the northern lights and fire mystify us if you saw that episode of stargate sg1 called the light in season five uh it does the same thing this light mystifies us with a tower of light just totally they were like uh it would be hypnotic i'm sure i mean a giant glowing christmas tree to the heavens 
reaching to a city and you want to see if there's other people there you know are they like us you know are they the gods uh you know many other questions are coming up immediately but the constant depiction and then the, the attempting to describe what it was like before as it's changing causes us as humans to have to imagine we didn't we weren't i mean and this is a very important power that w most people i ha uh, don't understand that human beings uh, have our brain is much more malleable than we think to an almost nth, almost nth degree and one of the instances that occurred uh that pointed that out was uh i watched a ted talk and a lady was down in um uh it was a, a it was a isolated tribe in africa but they spoke everything was orientated by northeast southwest uh, they did not have a concept of right and left so within the concept of right and left they would say depending on where you were standing i would say my northwest foot or my southeast foot if i was pointing and if i was sort of staying in that direction that's how you say everything no matter what and they always were infinitely aware of where north was now that was very interesting that they had that memory ingrained into them but that so much so that they didn't have a concept of right and left uh and that that sort of thing is how society how going from the must have been um let's just say living as humans uh on wild on a planet uh, without any sort of structure because we had no forces besides animals to deal with um there was nothing else really i mean natural disasters occasionally in floods but we didn't see anything in the sky too weird if that's the case then that makes perfect sense but once once we start seeing things and we can connect oh that thing in the sky causes bad crap here then you know that's just that simple if then logic is exactly the same thing that we were born for i mean that's how we hunt hey he ate that and he died so we don't eat those Okay, everyone know that? Don't eat that one. Eat those ones. They're good. Right. See, but it's very straightforward. You know, you do it without any, it's a yes, no situation, just slapping your kids on the hand. You can pass that information down. This is a whole different ballgame, and I don't think that they were capable of, uh, I mean, humans themselves might have been developed because of it. Now, that sort of discounts the idea of in a really beautiful egalitarian harmonic hippie golden age um except we would have thought it was golden because it would have been just you know eden as it were just a giant lush forest that you know as long as we well, avoid the, the things always, with sharp teeth you know. the grass is always greener on the other side and people always remember things you know greater than they are but the conundrum um, that pops up immediately is they still built with giant stones way back when, and they seem to have engineering. Yes. So that and that, means that, that they be, had to more that, As far as we know, um, because the, the, the pyramids, at least uh, uh, setting aside Giza, um, but Ganung Padong and uh, Bosnia, they were not really building with stones. They were shaping stones, and they were setting up these plinths and stuff, but they were using dirt still. But in the Tepe period, we definitely see, uh, and this is well known now with Gobekli Tepe, this sudden um, interest in the T-shape. And the T-shape, of course, uh, in the runes, T corresponds to the, the thunder and to the Awin shape of the Iao. The cross and, as well, yeah. Uh, Oh, or kind of yet. downward shaped, the T, the, uh, the T in the runes kind of tilts downwards. Oh, on oh, the slight angle, yes. Whereas the T's at uh, the Gobekli Tepe are more uh, straight across, uh, just like the T's that we still use. And we don't know what that means, but we do know that the oldest one of the Gobekli Tepe um, plinths that we've dug up and it, again, it may not be the oldest on site because they have not dug up even even twenty percent of the entire site, right? And they don't plan to, uh, despite what we I all need. I would submit that the sorry, data. Sorry, hold on, hold on. So the oldest one is a lion, and it it points back, I think, to Robert Baval's theory of the the Leo, the age of Leo. 
uh, that there was something in the constellation Leo that was happening. And for a specific period of time, they were recording animal god events and constellations and, and everything on these plants. And then suddenly they buried it all. And uh, Navali Chori, they, they shut it all down 9,000 years ago. And uh, we didn't have any major agriculture between then and Sumer that we can find. We have civilizations we've found, but we have no uh, signs of major agriculture. And the funny thing about that is the words of associated with field and and uh, agriculture in China, the the symbols for field also show up in the words for conflagration and disaster. So well, there may because have been we a, didn't need another to huge farm. Event. Well, that's why God yeah. gave us the animals to survive. No, 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 on. no, 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 no. Why not? Well, I mean, don't we get were, me wrong. We were farming. We were farming, and then we weren't farming, and then we started again in Sumer. Well, yes, but that's that 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 period in the middle. The we could call. It, well, now, do you have dates on it's that? It's called the 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 archaic period. Here, I would the nine thousand to five thousand years ago. That's exactly right before. Uh, uh, okay, so around that period, then this is when there was no agriculture, or, or it suddenly terminated. There's nothing that we know was a major. I'm not saying that there weren't people growing things like going out of and course. planting their own no. tomato plant. Yeah, I've got and it. The end, and the end of that is when. Culture. And the end of that is when the Bible starts six thousand years correct. ago. And right. also, it, uh, going back to go, go backly Tepe and the T-shaped pillars, it's a lot harder to build a roof on a slanted pillar than it is a T-shape. So yeah. Uh, well, these T-shaped pillars stand on their own. They, yes, they do. They don't. They're not used. Um, they are definitely either a combination of uh, spiritual and uh, astrological, or purely astrological. They definitely have stories on them. We don't know what they're saying exactly, but that's probably because we haven't dug enough of them up to get the whole book. Because for some reason, these archaeologists think that they can decode. Uh, enough of of the symbols just based on what they see to make up their minds about the whole civilization, which I don't think is true. It's sort of like there's an idea in archaeology that you can know a lot about the civilization based on their pottery, and I think that is that is uh, as ridiculous as saying you can know a lot about a household based on their silverware. I don't well, think has anybody in the EU really looked hard at the pillars. And the structures. No, that's one of the, well, that, we need to do that. Actually, that's, we've uh, I've looked at the structures of all the pillars from when I was a kid. They were like, these are Doric, these are this, these are that, and I was like, and now of course it doesn't take two does doesn't take two brain cells if the in the EU to rub together to see what was going on at the top of these pillars. But Gobekli Tepe does have the odd angled T-shaped pillar jutting out to one side. You can see the shockwaves and loops right at the top of it. There they are. And uh, there's that line again depicted. You can see the, uh, the rune-like layers that are coming from the earth just underneath that, uh, right over the, underneath those shockwaves, those, uh, sort of those uh, prominence loops. And uh, this is where you get the idea of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that we would consider. I mean, the great bird is there bringing a sphere um, and the, bag, the goose, handbag of the, the Sumerian goose and god. The go yes, the goose and the golden egg. This is all. This is all right there. It's it, it's. Well, it's you can't you, you can't say it's of the Sumerians because no. this predates yes. the Sumerians. Yes, this is like um, it would be like the the people trying to. It's sort of like a first. Uh, I wouldn't say a first attempt, but uh, something that was much closer to the events themselves. Specifically, yes. they buried them, buried it. Now, after that, things were sort of uh, drawn and then retold and stylized. And we see that happen, of course, with from, um, uh, I think I've used this one before, Noah's Ark as the concept on one end to Gilgamesh, the, his pyramid turning into a ship and sailing into the skies. And of course, Vishnu, the golden one, riding on this beautiful uh, bed all the image is the same. Um, this is clearly uh, an event that was um, 
not the same as the events of the Argo. The Argo had a crew and a battle and a whole right. whack of other stuff. Right. Uh, and yeah. things yeah. to go through. And also, so it wasn't and, the and same also battle. One, so. one thing, see the, see the CH there on, on the pillar? That yeah, that's Charles symbol. Hapgood's symbol. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making that, that up. Symbol, that symbol, the uh, Aborigines put that on their chest of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the, this down below, this is the Incans. Uh, or pre Incans, right? And um, the name of that is called. Um, that's at Pumapunku. Pumapunku, yeah. Yes. And then this is uh, Gobekli Tepe. So we see um, this tradition. And of course, we have to wonder where our own H uh, rune came from. Actually, that, Probably that, from that's these same events. Again, th to me, that looks like. This was brought up by Andy, by the way. In the tw at Bath at twenty eighteen con or twenty nineteen conference, we were having a conversation. That H symbol, he pointed it out just like you did. He said, "Look at this thing. What is that?" And then I immediately showed the picture of Jupiter with those uh, big balls on either side, and I was like, "Right, huh?" Eh? Because you're seeing, yeah, or or you could be seeing um, that could also be interpreted as a pro the uh, the exploding Pleiades. Uh, it well, be. I was going to say, it, I no. don't think it could be Jupiter because this is pre, this is pre-existing. That's the what Jupiter I mean. Myth. That this is this and is so uh, something it, like uh, you'd see. And who are these guys? What what are the, what's the Easter Island uh, figures going on here? Yeah, the, they they are they're shaped like men, the same way the. But those are much those are much newer. I mean, the volcanic yeah. rock there, we know it erodes it erodes very fast, and they themselves, um, have said that that since the island fell. Um, that would have been after these events. Oh, we've we, uh, so me the, and Eugene was on, and we had a debate about the age too, because it said the age is only supposed to be seven hundred years for this and three hundred years for that. And I go, but we found Squatterman symbols, the perfect Squatterman symbol, the archetype of the Squatterman symbol on a Hawaiian beach, and they dated that at four hundred years because they don't want to admit that any, anyone right. was there. It's probably. So it's, I think that's similar here that they they can't admit that they, is, that any of these symbols are old. I don't think it's twelve thousand years. Oh, um, well, that, they they say they that, 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 that this was that. buried at nine thousand BC. Yeah, they're they're so, but whenever this was made, um, had to be before that. Yeah, it would probably points to something to do with Jim's hypothesis because that's what we're, I meant. Yes. we're talking very yeah, very yeah, I ancient. Agree. Very ancient event. And maybe then maybe the golden down. age was sort of happening, and then uh, as as we got brushed with the um, the whirl that went out from it, um, which is interesting that 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 whirl effect was first shown in uh, the blowing up of Kronos. No, no. Oh my God! It is Kronos, except with a Q. Yeah, Kronos in Klingons. The moon yeah. of Praxis the blew up, Praxis. and that wave comes out and hits uh, and hits the ship of uh, Sulu, you know, and the the Excelsior gets that gets hit with that wave in 1991's uh, Star Trek: The Undiscovered you know, Country. You, you, the you know the running joke. The you know the running joke about Star Trek fans is that no matter what conversation you're having, they'll turn it back to a com to an episode of Star Trek. Well, the <laughs> only reason is was this had an expanding loop in it, just like the uh, the yeah. new replays of the of the Death Star when in, when the are Death you Star arguing exploded. That it's, are you arguing that these images are imprinted on the cultural memory again? Or you just, that was my argument. Yes, just, uh, that's one all person I was saying. Could say that any any uh, one person could say any kindergartner might make that shape, but the um, I think that there is a good argument that a lot of these obsessions well, it take, resonated, uh, is what I meant. Take the the take the uh, Kryptonian myth uh, that's been invented for the um, Superman, right? Right. Uh, you could point that right back to these same uh, original motifs. And <laughs> gets his power from the sun, of course. Yeah, also doesn't of, like uh, the green know, thing. Continuously, in fact, come, if it, anything it else, it's Jupiter. Out. I mean, and when because... the wave. The green when the is sorry. The green itself, of course, it would be a representation. Uh, Krypton, Krypton, that green gem is exactly the same depiction of the green that was always used for Saturn itself, uh, which is kind of cool. The only time he even had a threat was when he was fighting Kronos. After he otherwise, Jupiter ruled everything. He was the strongest of all gods. He was stronger than locomotive. So I hear. And and when the wave hit, I, um the solar system it 
that's the way the awakening well, that, that, awakening I of think the human brain no that, no that's all that the, energy uh, i'll go with you and sean sean in a sec but what you were yeah, saying there say is, is, yeah. is 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 what happened is is i was saying i was going to finish my thought the basically the uh the the saturn um system or the earth or the solar system uh collided with our system whichever one it doesn't matter to me which one was came first the chicken or the egg but that merger of our systems, they approached each, they yeah, approached each other because of this that's... event pushed them this way and created that actual event. Anyway, yeah. that's just a thought that could explain both things and explain well, this the period huge... of time. The period of time that that I'm giving for that forty thousand to twelve thousand, if if Jim's squatter man was existing up in the sky that long, that easily two solar systems that were not close together could approach each other in that much time period. Oh yes, Easily. and there's also, of course, the depictions before that, and uh, and of course after that, you could see that some of the but some of the oldest petroglyphs then, uh, but the, the, you would, we did have to have a modern because like, we saw some of these turn into like these spines that travel at the that look like they travel at the pillars of the top of the world. That's the only thing I could think of, and the way that they lean towards us, is some of those depictions. And the two Egyptian comic e cosmic eggs comic. Well, it's just because we have we have, the, the, but that's that Squatterman symbol being so well, perfect in the sky means that some of these are incredibly old. Before we go to the megalithic period, and and actually maybe he could lead it off. I would like to hear what Sean wanted to say. Well, that's what I was going to. If he wants to talk here. about, yeah. I just wanted to. Ask, it, 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 I just have a just have a general question. Um, at Gobi Tepe, was there any coppers? Or bronzes, or any silver? No, no oh, stone none, age. None, none at all. Pure all stone, stone age. age. Okay. Yeah, that's all stone gotcha. age technology. Gotcha. But that doesn't yeah, mean I, that they I, weren't I, advanced I, enough, because um, the, there's no proof that the Bosnian pyramids were built with, or the Ganung Padang, that they were built with any kind of metals either. It could have very easily been done with stone chisels, stone axes. Uh, you you can do a lot with stone if you flint it correct. If you flint nap it correctly. You can make blades that will take down a tree pretty quick. So, you know, you can make con – there's no reason they couldn't make concretes uh, with, within the Stone Age. There's nothing saying that they, that they wouldn't be capable of doing that. Um, so Gobekli Tepe, they're well-shaped, but we don't think that they had metal. But at the same time, um, I could easily see them being the result of – of uh, essentially uh, polymer formation or molding formation, however you want to say that. Uh, I think, though, that they that they attest that they're all chiseled uh, and then and then polished, you know, whatever, uh, smoothed uh, into their into their current shape. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if they had basic metallurgy, like uh, nothing advanced, obviously. But uh, you know, if they had, if they would find uh, copper and melt it, um, we think that the majority of copper for Egypt came from Michigan, and because it's it's a, it was a hundred percent ore, you could just pick it up off the ground and melt it and go with it. When you look at the Michigan copper. It was mixed with silver, which would go to Ito's theory of how in the heck are are you transitioning from one metal to the 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 metal below it in the same family, right? Um, without without a structured uh, atomic model, and um, but the, you should never find copper and silver just immediately adjacent to each other, and yet they did at Michigan, and we we have a good feeling that something major happened. Uh, in the Michigan area, but we don't know when. Well, of there's course. also a giant so, pyramid yeah. there that helps. But well, that's where all the impact. Right, right, they right. say there's an impact crater in Michigan. Yeah, where where this big. Well, yeah, but also there's one down, in Sudbury yeah. too. Yeah, but I I, yeah, I think again that it's, whole area. It's, crater, there's I mean, craters all over. It's the thunderbolts of the gods that came down and did that. Well, and what, what, there what, do, been what do you think made the Great Lakes anyway? Of course, this is it, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. it could have been a, a trans. <laughs> it could have been a trans. Uh, definitely, uh, like a transformation of of uh, what was there and. Um, well, speaking, however, at any rate, at any rate, speaking though, of the Michigan copper, there. When I was younger, I remember someone bringing out some studies of saying that copper from the old world was tested and it was found to be copper from Michigan in it. Yes, yeah. King Solomon's they, Mines, yes. 
Yes, they, that's exactly they, where yeah, he went. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's very good evidence. Unfortunately, a lot of it uh, has either been buried or poo pooed or whatever, and and it is getting harder to find good evidence from Egypt or from old Europe uh, of copper to to do uh, testing of the isotopes. But and, and I think that the the Sea Peoples were the peoples of Santorini, and they're related with the Phoenicians and Jewish people, and they're all basically one peop one group of people over a whole length of time that kept the secret for a long, long time. Well, probably a flat if, Earth. If you're if you're moving all over um, the world uh, to uh, avoid the terrible events that had befallen your land when it had been ruined perhaps by a thunderbolt um, or perhaps well, by Santorini a, an blew impact. Up, right? Well, Santorini San itself blew up, but that, but the question is, you know, why did it blow up at that trends at that particular period of time? We know now the Venus event and you see Sinai also blowing up at the same time. Um, yeah, so 1500 BC. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So if, if you had to leave, is there a chance that you could accidentally stumble upon the Mississippi uh, River Valley? Yeah, I think that there's absolutely a chance. They've also could have uh, come from the north and crossed across Canada. Well, we've seen um, we the see Nor James. In, we see in the ancient Norse images car or painted on rock. We see Phoenician type boats. Yes. And the the established uh, scientific community say that the Norse boats evolved from the Inuit type boats, which is frame boats with skin on them i submit no way there's no way that they evolved from that it's actually very interesting that you brought that up because one of the things that i've noticed and this is a and if you want to know a little bit more uh um about your about your own work there ramon because i know you do a lot of work in kentucky but canada is a lot more open to its own discoveries because i mean there's none of this uh, I don't know what the manifest destiny, whatever is languishing in this whole, uh, if we give one inch, the whole world is going to fall out. If, you know, whatever that might have been. But they clearly uh, talk, we're, we're very open about the idea. Like, we think now the, it's come to our the conclusion that the, Vi the Vikings were occupying, for example, all the way down to uh, Nova Scotia, at least maybe all the way past to Boston which is crazy. Uh, we know that we have uh, perfect uh, mounds of, uh, of burials that were done uh, for a king somewhere around 12,000 years ago, 9,000 BC, on the North Shore of, in, on, a rocky out, on a rocky outcropping. So he was just put there and then covered with stones and it's been sitting there undisturbed. Like crazy. And in Labrador, there was a Chinese community there. Go ahead, Neil. Oh, it's 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 uh, amazing the amount of um, of uh, the 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 cultures that we've discovered uh, and some of the stuff that was truly amazing. For example, they were wondering where did the Chinese get all their jade, and then we found that Canada is literally covered in the stuff. Jade is like I mean we find jade jade boulders bigger than houses like all the time, and uh, and we found and we found uh, out in the middle of Ontario we found a place that was carved out of jade that was clearly old so old the trees are growing up through it breaking mm -hmm. these rocks in half, and it was made by man and we're like I have no idea what this even means. Oh, yeah. Raymond's. Come to Toronto and research Thunderbird Mound. <laughs> Sorry. Well, anyway, That's okay. that, that, these are just uh, little ideas about some of the, uh, um, some of the stuff that we've, because clearly green is supposed to represent, uh, like blue is supposed to be protection against the god. We use uh, protection against electricity. That was uh, that's why turquoise was used by certain cultures. Jade was also loved, of course. There's some of it right there. And beautiful, yeah, huge, and it's just everywhere. Like oh, I wow, said, it, it's rocks. Yeah. They're just to us. Don't, they're rocks. We climb over top of them. But don't tell China; they'll they'll buy it all up. I tell you that. No, no, they, that, they, I they, think they, they were. 
That's what you mean in the past. The, largest, <laughs> the, the current uh, largest copper ingot, uh, which came out of Michigan, is is now uh, is now in China because they they love this stuff. It's very well. Green uh, was the color of uh, of Saturn, so yes, that's why but the I property think... the properties of jade uh, jadeite more, but nephrite as well are uh, basically mystical in Chinese. Well, of course, folklore. look at them. Wait a second. Ancient Saturn was green, not uh, its current brown. No, uh, it, it was yeah, definitely green. Perfect. It was green. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. you can tell by the scarabs uh, in the. Well, in, in, you have quotes right from right from the Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, green. It was one, a green you know. light, and that makes green. a lot of sense. By the way, in a lot of cases, why when we were looking at water and other things, the colors were wrong. Like they say, blue was only invented, like. A little Correct. while ago, well, four thousand three hundred BC is well, the first mention of blue. Well, the trouble is, is that makes perfect sense because the skies would be changing. But also, once the green light went away, the constant green light, which would have made plants grow like crazy, uh, it would have made everything look kind of red. So water would look black, and that type and of stuff. Honey had a green a green hue to it as well. Yeah, not which a, is, a golden hue exactly because the light's different. And this is our sunlight obviously cleared over time and has changed as well. Like uh, there are certain times when the, the, the light uh, of the sun was completely uh, different. In fact, I put in that picture uh, uh, showing what, like you mentioned the cue, uh, but there's a lot of uh, images that were thrown up there. But anyway, keep going. Where are they? Uh, oh my God. Gareth and Robert have both arrived. Hey guys. Buddy too, yay! Awesome. Hey, um, uh, yeah, all done. In the, dis Finished in, the here. in the discussion of the megalithic period, I, I'd like to hear um, Sean's thoughts about how there was a, a transition from uh, the old religions into a newer, uh, the newer religions, and and uh, how he thinks that those. Uh, were influenced either by the events or by the needs of of uh, these interacting peoples. Uh, maybe if Sean doesn't mind to to give. Yeah, I mean, from my research, Zoroastrianism becomes the key because that's the first time there's duality, if you will, good and evil. A because there's no devil in the Old Testament. That's a New Testament. Theme. You. That that's yeah, that's where the Zoroastrianism movement is where the roots start. Where be, I think it starts to be things start to become clear, or at least the Persians, if you will, were starting to put things into a their own clearer context. If that even makes sense. With the Sumerians the themselves old, are. Uh, Zoroast the, the origin of Zoroastrianism, or was it uh, the uh, Babylonians? And uh, well, the, the, that that would be Persians, like think oh. of the movie Three Hundred. Okay. Yeah. That, well, that, I, well, that, that's that's almost monster, hilariously monster. humorous about how poorly yeah. they depict the Bur the Persians. But go on. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So Zoroastrianism is the first is where that starts. Good and evil. Whereas in the old stories, there wasn't good or evil. It was, like, you were talking about that when we were talking about the uh, Godzilla. Yeah. There wasn't a good or evil. There wasn't a good guy or a bad guy. There may have been an adversarial type of character, if you will. But they weren't or, fighting yet. You know, um, yeah, they may have been fighting, but one wasn't depicted as the good guy or the bad guy. Oh, that, okay. That started, yeah, that started with Zoroastrianism and the, and the, and the Mazdaism. It, it was around what the second century BC. So we are we are going with an and interpretation then, at that point that they were traumatized to the uh, and they knew good and then one of them was definitely bad. Yeah, there's a heaven and hell. There's judgment. You, you, the Messiah right now. And yep. Yes. It, 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 that's that's, ho that's hope really for the future. Is what started. that is. Go on. It, it's yes. It start it starts there though. You can definitely see the root of. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam 
Oh yeah, very hard rules. Yeah. Much but different it, than the Eastern cultures. It's my understanding, though, that the Croesus philosophy goes all the way back to 2000 or even 2600 BC in Egypt. Isn't that where? Well, I mean, was it was that was that all to do with the return of trying to get you know raw to return? How would you categorize that? Yeah, it kind of gets comp- not not complicated, but then there's the enigma that um, of uh, What's his name? Oh my goodness! I'm on the tip of my tongue again. Uh, Akhenaten, and how Akhenaten like switched and flipped the script, if you will, in terms of his theology, if you will. I know that there's a certain amount of kings that this whole stories of the Duat and, uh, if you will, aren't in their tombs. Definitely Akhenaten is one of them. It's, again, I, I subscribe to still timelines are kind of screwed up. Nonetheless, Zoroastrianism seems to be the root of where the modern-day Hellenistic uh, influenced religions comes from. But then right. it even becomes the, the, the enigma continues because the first example we even have about what you would call quote unquote a fallen angel is definitely rooted in Judaism and, and biblical text. There is no talk about a quote-unquote fallen angel, which just means messenger or message or messenger. That's when it even starts to even become more diverse, if you will, to where it's, that, that didn't exist before that. Like, you can't find a story about a quote-unquote fallen angel or a fallen god till you get to the, to the uh, um, uh, Torah, if you will, um, Pentateuch. And it seems to still be rooted in Zoroastrianism. But once you go back further from Zoroastrianism, we're still talking about mythological archetypes and the pieces of this puzzle, pieces of, this, of the story of, of cataclysms and uh, the planetary gods. So again, and, using, using, so, Velikovs- using Velikovsky's dates, we're talking about the Martian event being the boundary condition between the old, old world and the ideas of the gods and the new new world's idea of the gods being more anthropogenic right. is, is kind of what you're right. hinting at. Around yeah, the same yeah, time yeah, that blue is, blue is first mentioned, 4000 BC-ish. Well, uh, yeah, that's, that's even like, I know there's dates, and I think it's the uh, Zondervan Bible gives dates of the creation story, and it was like 4200 BC or something, and that always kind of baffled me. And yeah, so I figured out, and we all was figuring out that the creation stories aren't like a zero point of all life in the universe. It's, it's a right. certain point. And yes, yeah, it's from a certain point in uh, history. Opposed right. To, you know, a I starting think it, the, Genesis, the genesis of the Bibles becomes the, the people of the transition periods. Uh, view of the megalithic yeah. period, but for the people in the megalithic period, their genesis would be way on back to the the squatter man and the events that were uh, up in the sky before. This the was actually the discussed too. Exactly, and that would be. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Neil. Oh, I was just going to say that 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 yeah, it does appear to be a first and second creation. Uh, people of uh, well, the... and, and and some of the some of the myths are also some of the are also just regular legends. Like like well, so, the stork that brought the golden egg or Jack and the Beanstalk, those type of tales indicate to us, and the and the and the way that they are conveyed to children in a, in a, in that kind of way, relate to us that there is more to them than just um, that uh, r- that truly depicts uh, some sort of activity going on, and the, of course the activity with the may, may maypole where you run around. Would be- and, would be Saturn flaring twice in documented history. Well, th- this is the thing. We do know that there was a time when uh, that that uh, if if the polar conjunction is correct, and that's not an all Saturn myth, but I, I I almost cannot deny that there seems to be the case that uh, at least the aurora of the Earth was extremely extremely strong, and if that was the case. The northern lights, if you've ever seen them with your own eyes, are impossible to ignore. You can't, you can't ignore them. If there is nothing, I mean, you just have to watch them. They mesmerize you. 
And if that was seen by part of the earth, it would have been considered holy in no matter what you, you now, now the ending of this, the, the idea that we're transitioning time frames, uh, the fallen God motif, as we had discussed, um, I'm very interested in that because I mean, besides the fact that it's a tarot card and besides the fact that it also is depicted in the Apocrypha as Semiaza, I think his name is, and hanging upside down by one leg. But then there's also the idea of what this must have been if we were watching it. And Semiaza here is Lucifer, is the morning star, is Venus. And then it was the final flare up where he rivaled God for brilliance. And then he was cast down and he became a star or a planet or Venus. Uh, just a dot in the sky. Well, it said that Venus was brighter than the sun, and when they're mentioning the sun, we keep forgetting we're we're not talking about this sun. We're talking about Venus was Saturn. exceptionally bright. Yes, it was almost a core, it was core material ejected out of a, a gas giant. Well, or... it'd be the sun. It'd be a sun if it was the if if the Venus was the core which was causing it to be green in the first place. Uh, then is ejected and now is radiating green in the sky as Venus was known to do in, in its early days. Oh, it's certainly. Yeah, I don't think was, it was the entire core. I think it was a part a part of the very, core. Very, very we don't possible. even know what planet it came from. So it could have been came from Venus, Jupiter. It could have been. It could have been the reason well, that all these moons exist in the first we place. Know, they were all the, barfed at the same time. We but. we don't know, but for the Mayans, it was very very distinct, and and they they were very specific. But um, anyways, we've re, we've recounted what that. Do, what do the Mayans say about that? They said very clearly that Quetzalcoatl, they talk about him as a person. Then he goes down to a beach and sets himself on fire, and out, out, of, his, out of his body his heart came, and it, and it was green, and it became the morning star. That's and exactly, Quetzalcoatl that is That's exactly Saturn. Saturn. Saturn, right, Saturn. And there's, um, there's the flaming Buddha palm. Or, or, yeah. Right, but this is Aztec. As, as we're doing this, ah. as we're doing this I'm going to mention something else, too. Like, you know how we watched Star Wars back in the day when it first came out in 77? Yeah, I'm that old. I watched the story it started the drive in the middle yeah. of the story. It, it, it started in the middle of the story, where it was at a climax point, essentially. So, you know, Luke is kind of arc it in Return of the Jedi. It starts in the middle of the story. So the ancient Bronze Age, we'll say, culture did not start their stories in a linear fashion from the very beginning of the story. They went right to the good part. And that's the hardest part of this whole bit of research. Like, they're going right to the meat. <laughs> they might go backwards a little bit, flashback and flash forward. Real I'm sorry, quick, you're, you're really hurting my meat. brain by thinking that the trilogy, the, the prequels are actually the golden age of Star Wars. You're making me hurt. But go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, it's like, okay, again, it's like they're talking about the transition from the golden age to the Jovian age and all the drama. They're right. going like right to it. They're not saying, well, what happened was in the Golden Age, things were so beautiful and wonderful for so many thousands of years, and then all well, of a sudden, yeah, that, they but all of a sudden. That's just a, right that's you know, Neil, yeah. Neil, part of the reason why the prequels aren't as good is unlike the the original trilogy, which which followed the Campbell-defined warrior's path, uh, which would have connected immediately to true events, the prequels were something that he created after he'd been influenced by all the extended uh, universe material, and he sat down to write it later. That wasn't his original uh, material, and the original material has sometimes been provided, um, and it usually is a lot better than what actually entered into the movies. Um, so I had heard that again, the prequels were actually. I had heard that the prequels were actually written to dis, uh, discuss how a. Uh, a democracy falls from within. Yeah, was it was like the subtle tones of yes, it. Yes, he, he it changed, wasn't so freaking subtle. Changed. It wasn't subtle. <laughs> His, he changed. Yeah, wasn't, he wasn't changed. Subtle. He changed what he was doing from the time that he originally conceived of it. And what do you see as a result? People did not enjoy uh, it as much. And now the new stuff is even more is more disconnected from the origins of the because that original trilogy was full of connections to this stuff. Um, and anytime we connect to this That's stuff or electricity, we 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 attain um, we get excited as a as a culture and as a probably a species. I don't know. I've never asked a Dogon what do they think of uh, you know the Empire Strikes Back, but 
Um, mm. Good question. I though. would imagine that they would understand it on a on a deep level. Or um, female Thor. Uh, how, I'm sorry. You, that you what? <laughs> yeah, the next Thor is going to be female. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be Padme I'm actually. Sure, I'm sure. But but that's what's in the comic books, so a lot of people freaking okay. out for no freaking reason. But it makes, it makes oh, really good sense. Me, so. It's still cultural genocide, anyways. Uh, <laughs> it's still cultural genocide. Is, what, what, what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is give you guys some food for. I'm gonna give you guys some food for thought in terms of how we look for patterns. Right. Because since the Bible is more widely recognized than the myth we're talking about, we see Genesis the first page. I caught, which is the first chapter. We're talking about Elohim and the seven days of creation. Okay, we're all familiar with it, but if I have to go back to it, I will. But we get to Genesis 2, and it talks about the heavens and earth were finished, and we're still talking about God and Elohim. Then when it gets to verse, I want to say, 6 or 7, the story goes backwards, because now we're talking about the Lord God. And the story, re it's not the eighth day, the story resets. And we're talking about Yahweh Elohim. We're not talking about Elohim anymore. Because in the fifth day, or the sixth day, I'm sorry, male and female were both created. The beasts of the field were created in day five of the story, okay? But in the second chapter, since the story resets, it goes back to... The day that the earth and heavens were created, and Adam was created first, then the beast of the field was created to be named him, then he was created after that. So the story goes backwards. It's not day eight, and then by the time we get to the flood, that's after the seven days of creation. The flood happened within, and I've always talked to people about this, it would have happened within between day one and day four between the first light that was seen and then the two great lights. But most people don't see the story go backwards, and it does go backwards. It says it goes backwards. So there's a creation myth within the first day of the creation myth that they're talking about in the second chapter. It's, it's kind of a tongue, not a tongue twister, but it's kind of something to look at. It's how the story in, in the Bible is not linear. By the time we get to Noah's flood, right. it's, time hasn't passed from the seventh day of creation. It's back within the first, somewhere within the first seven days of creation itself. Kind of like you get the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh is the story, I would say, within the seven tablets of creation, not after that. Does that make sense? But you have to look at it because... It is a different story. It's not the same story. The story in Genesis 2 is not the same as the story in Genesis 1. The male and female were created together but in Genesis 2. Adam is first, then the beast that he names, then Eve. But then in Genesis 1, again, the, the beast of the field are created, the animals are created first, then male and female would be in a whole different day. But it's a replenishing story because it does say be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth in Genesis 6 day. No one ever so, asked why it would need replenishment. Yeah. It, it, replenish, it, it, yes, it, it, that's the key. Yeah, it, it definitely, yeah, so it's like you get an outline in Genesis 1, but Genesis 2, like a lot of people have asked, they say, that's the eighth day, that's after the seventh day. No, it goes backwards. But now we're talking about a different deity because Lord God is not the same deity as God. Elohim and Yahweh Elohim are not the same. That's correct. That's correct. And Adam... Adam represents the change of humanity. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was going to say it represents Mars to me, but go on. Michael Armstrong, he didn't come on yet, but Michael blew me away because he said, and I know about Egyptian myths, and he said, well, the ba or soul or heart of Ray is Mars. Sounds like correct. Okay, Mars is a war deity. Correct. So is the Lord in the Bible. Correct. The Lord is a man of war. That's Exodus 3 and 15. So well, we're not seeing where they're doing the same thing without pictures, in other words. So again, every you time know, Montu one of these. Egypt is a war deity. So is Apollo. So, so is Apollo. Oh, it's Montu. So is, uh, yeah, I'm saying it right. Is Apollo? No, Apollo is Jupiter. Um, it's Mars. Mars is uh, Aries. I'm sorry. It's always it's Montu in Egypt. It's, Shu and her, it's and her, you know, it's like, oh, well, wow, there is a pattern, and it's like, we're just reading it, and you don't 
we then think that it's that closely, or it is related to the ancient myths, and it's like, oh, it's like, yeah, that would make sense. That would make a whole lot of sense. Like, gee, um, sure it would. I, I just brought it up because, you know, myths are told, like, from the meaty core of it, you know, right away. And biblically, we kind of look at it like it's, it's a story that starts 6,000 years ago and it moves forward, but that's not necessarily even the case. Um, between Genesis 1 and at least 10, where they get off the boat, if you will, and then um, uh, things kind of carry forward from, from that point. But that's still within the first seven days of creation. You know, I know most people may not be able to wrap their heads around it, but that's the, the, the pattern that it follows biblically, the same pattern it's following, um, you know, through the, through the cultural myth. And, you know, we, we say there's so many of them in there. You, yeah, you'd have to, watch, you'd have to change. read several of the actual, uh, like several versions of the Bible, uh, several of the books, right. and you'd, you'd have a better grasp of it because they're all slightly different. But the story of Genesis is right. generally, uh, it, it is very, to me, astrological. Uh, I mean, you have the great tree, you have the snake wrapped around it, you have, um, uh, which is, of course, Norse straight up, but then you have, of course, the, um, the apple, you know, uh, Venus came, came later, the, uh, from a rib, which is like, just like the eye of Ra mm -hmm. sticking out from the side, there's Venus popping out and and then she's born and the conflagration or, or, or dance that they do there is, uh, is basically depicted until finally she decides to actually touch the apple and all hell breaks loose. Right. Um, yeah. Or the red, oh, man, that's whatever. It, you know, it's, it it's seems... Well, it just, it just feels that way. It's also <laughs> why I have the same argument with uh, Ramon about uh, uh, whether or not that same motif is not King Arthur, Lancelot, Guinevere, but, you know. Mm. But let's. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's a reoccurring moral motif. Yeah. This is good stuff. This is good stuff here. Well, I, I love your paper, by the way. The stuff. pictures were great, by the way, Ramon. <laughs> I'm just oh, uh, no, no, no problem. I, I made it. I made it for, even though I didn't know you guys, I made it for people like you guys, so that um, you could quickly, of course, uh, find. Um, it's, something and, and quickly get uh, also some citations and it seems that um, you did with your epiphany when it came to you 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 actually inscribed your epiphany in stone much like gareth is doing with inscribing his in video yeah uh, i it's, it's same, didn't similar similar process yeah. yes you have to you have to do it yourself mine was sitting there and just yakking to people i would just tell my friends this stuff and they would go neil shut up and i was like no you're my friend you must deal with me yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, it, that's the burden of friendship. But um, it, 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 I wanted it also to exist as, um, I wouldn't call it as good as stone, but something that uh, would be there for uh, us to use for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years uh, to, to come back to. And uh, we could I would you know, love keep that. adding to and keep adding to. And, and well, we need to. It needs to be recorded. There needs to be... Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that or thought that. I was going to say, well, there needs to be a Bible with the EU stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. Well, that's, that, that's sort of the idea. With yeah, the, but I don't want uh, any canon or dogma, but you're right. We, but No, let me finish what I was saying. That's sorry. sort of the idea as far as the, um, ca the catalog that we want to create and the, the presser would be the uh, sort of introduction to that, but for now, just having uh, papers that have all the links that that uh, we can do. I mean, I created this table in order to to help people to to uh, put it together. And also, this is a the, my first uh, catapult attack on the mainstream. Um, and by the way, everyone who's watching, we put that right in the uh, comment section. My um, the Electric View page is on this site. You can just then uh, go from there to everywhere else. And, and there's, 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 of course, going to be uh, lots more information about the Purple Dawn. And I, I hope I hope people put together huge papers I'll on the Purple Dawn. Site to Neil, not your Electric View site. 
just just you got to remember to remain humble and know that it's a collective as well um as far as the timeline goes there was only left the discussion of this the end of the transition period into the religious period um I think it's kind of an interesting thing. People people put a lot of negative emphasis on the religious period. Yeah, I don't like that. There, well, there's there's something that that people have got to remember is that of course we can go back and we can decode a lot by comparing the the, the various gods, um, and and we can get back Love we can that. see we can see conjunction between, and and people will say, oh well, maybe the concept of Yggdrasil was imported from, but I argue it was actually a local. Um, tradition but that was probably augmented, but it, I don't think it originated. I think it was real. I think that these these other worlds uh, of the elves and uh, of the gods, et cetera, the Isir versus the Vanir, I think is, although much later written down, I think it was something that existed locally and is a great reflection of the story in the Mahabharata. And I think that that's, that's useful information. Um, obviously, if you talk to a, an Old Norse specialist, they're going to say, well, these stories weren't written down to the Dark Ages anyhow. Um, well, yeah, but, but written down doesn't mean that they weren't told. That's, that's exactly correct. And uh, in some cases, you can feel the antiquity of the story when you listen to, uh, say, the stories of Thor. You can actually tell which ones are more cosmic or, or cosmological rather than um, being kind of stories of manhood and, you know, just because they had a very machismo culture. Um, and then the religious period, uh, then everything starts to kind of uh, flip on its end because you had, in the transition period, you had all this confluence of ideas and the interactions of the hundred schools in China, and you had uh, all these different uh, religions in, in India being created, and you had the breakdown of uh, Egypt and Greece, and which seeded so many other cultures, uh, scientifically, mathematically, philosophically, uh, and benefited them. I mean, the Romans clearly benefited from the downfall of Greece and Carthage, and uh, they that enabled them to go uh, forward technologically speaking. And the religious period gets going, and yeah, it did in one way hold us uh, back. But I think that's more just our tendency to believe that tradition has inherent values. So that Ptolemy and Aristotle were correct because they're old. Uh, that's a that's our problem. It's not really necessarily the fault of religion itself. Well, yeah, uh, religion, but also the fall of Rome was, a, was like a, like usually I, if, well now more attributed to the environmental conditions of that uh, disaster that occurred in 535 well, but there 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 could be arguments of you know was it the religious side and the loss of morals was it the government wasn't uh, you know holding up very well i mean i guess we'll find out if all the republics of the west fall and we can in a thousand years i can look back and go, oh they only last 200 years then you could say <laughs> that rome maybe it was the republic's fault but uh, what we do know is that during that religious period, um, there was uh, actually a fair amount of advancement uh, that people don't give credit to. The, the real dark of the Dark Ages is that our culture has trouble connecting to it. But there was plenty of development during the Dark Ages uh, in, say, architecture, war, farming techniques, um, there just wasn't there. We we don't have a great connection to it because it isn't Latin based, and that's not the fault of Dark Age Germany or Dark Age uh, Romania. That is uh, no. Just with the life where continues. Culture, yeah, yeah. In our yeah. in our area, I mean, the Arabs were like, oh, like Byzantium was staying there, and the and the Roman Empire fell, and they were like, oh, crap. Yeah. That, that's then, nothing changed for them. They if, just <laughs> if 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 it if it weren't advancing, then you wouldn't have during the religious period the beginnings of the the trickling currents that became the Renaissance, which then became the ages of exploration and the uh, the Enlightenment period, which became immediately the the scientific period. Um, it, they, these, this idea of currents, uh, these that start off as little trickles and then build together, uh, 
I think can set us free of the biases that we have against like certain periods. Like, oh, this is what's defined like this. But all the whole world wasn't necessarily going through that. The again, the Mesoamericans were doing megalithic period behavior well into the religious uh, period, all the way right up until the age of exploration. Um, and in some cases, uh, such as the Pawnee, were sacrificing hearts to Venus right up to 1905, which is, you know, again, right crazy. into the scientific period. Well, crazy to us, but not necessarily crazy historically speaking. Um, they... Sorry, it sounds well, crazy. Um, well, it I, sounds, don't, I don't mean to imply crazy. that they were actually crazy. But, I know they do it you know, for a reason. Have you... Yeah, have you well, ever it was read their have, religion, right? So have you ever read uh, Shogun? I have not. Well, one of the things that happens on Jin, uh, of course, he has a, a, a he's um, I forget what was he Belgian or something like that. When he is captured by the samurai, uh, he's kept sort of like a, an animal a bit, but he's also uh, given uh, a, a female samurai to explain the world to him. And he has very strong opinions about the barbarity of certain parts of their culture. And then later on, he comes to learn that his own culture is very barbaric because now he's yep. bathing and such. But the, the, the point being, what she says to him is that all these things are just part of the cycle of life. And the Japanese did not place an inordinate um, value upon a single life because of the continuous stream of changing life that it's sort of like, um, you know, when people freak out when they see uh, somebody, let's say, kill a bug and they're ignoring the totality of how many insects are dying every second around them, actually, just like in their front yard or just endlessly dying. <laughs> There's just insects constantly being born and dying out there. And the Japanese in a Buddhistic sense had a, had a uh, a way of looking at it a lot like India, where it was kind of this continual wave of of change and transition, and that it was expected that the gods themselves would also die, and and it was all just like the Mayans, those those bigger and smaller wheels, and some wheels go fast. You know, human lives go fast compared to the gods, and the gods' lives go fast compared to the mountains. Um. And I'm not speaking, of course, the electric universe. I'm just, right. you know, and the, the just, uh, I, I, I've got, but, I got, yeah. I and get. so uh, we have this attachment like it's, uh, and, and many people have talked about this, that we believe that our society is evolving to some ultimate thing and that we are the, the spear, the tip of the spear on that evolution. But uh, there's not really much basis for that, uh, uh, really speaking. Religion itself probably is not going to go away, but is dormant or dying in its current form and being reborn in yes. another form. I was about to bring that up about the whole ufology and the ideas of the age yep. of Aquarius. Well, the tech, you've got the technocracy. People are walking around with, if you, if you think about it, Love these the electronics, AI. these electronics are a connection to the force, to the Tao and to, uh, and because the word for, the Tao contains the concept of uh, path and uh, energy, and it connects right back to the thunder god. And that thunder god glyph shows up in Chinese in the concepts also of uh, spirit, ghost, um, all sorts of religious concepts, gods, demons, etc. Well, that's, this this is one of the reasons why and I, we talk about the say that these electronics are are current. Go ahead. I was uh, oh sorry I was going to agree with you on the electronics but uh, also in their connection but uh, because yes. of, but clearly that's true but the the uh, the wispy um, when you talk about spirit the the Tao and the ghost uh, how they all imply intelligence and yet are wispy that's the uh, the effect that you have when seeing the Northern Lights, if you never did it, if you, I mean, really see them with your own eyes because they take up the whole sky, they're impossible to ignore. And those type of events sort of really change you. I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure you all have been humbled by looking over, for example, uh, the Grand Canyon and stuff like that. But I mean, 
there is truly uh, there's truly something to uh, seeing uh, events like uh, on a on a scale like that. So, but yes, how it goes? There's a video. There's a video yes. too that Michael Armstrong did do. I think it was E2017, and it was called the Cultural Carry Forward, where everything we're talking about he outlined at a conference. Whereas even when you're talking about human sacrifice and people cutting people's hearts out, it could have been at the time, you know, people wanted to commit suicide during those times, you know, when Molech, that aspect Absolutely. of Saturn, when devouring his children, yeah, was, was, was happening, then it stuck in the, in, in, in the, not even the subconscious, but it stuck with certain cultures to where they didn't become unstructural very, very recently. You know, they just kept doing the same things over and over and over. Right. The cultural carry forward. He outlined everything. He just outlined it and was like, wow, that's a hell of an outline. And exactly what we're talking about now. And yes, it was, not con- how- it was not considered awful to be con- sacrificed to uh, Huitzilopochtli. Yeah. Because and what, and what, what can we – sorry, Rick, I got to say this. And what can we do with this knowledge today? We can teach others that the religion that we have now is right in in the in the good aspects, but there are aspects of it that are dark and evil that we have to stay away from. Well, if we if, could use the word dark and evil and you're gonna you're gonna rile people up, what you can say is that the closer it connects to the origins of religions, uh, such as the the transition from Yahweh, or from El to Yahweh is is right. It's in the Egyptian. It's in the Chinese, and it was a real event. Yes. Um, and the closer that people can understand that father to son motif, uh, and the transfer of power, if it if if they remain tr- uh, true to those things, they're going to get truth. What uh, that truth may not necessarily have anything to do with re- getting a salvation, but it might free them from a burden of feeling. A certain way, uh, however, however they're feeling, or it may excite them to get them out of a depression. And uh, I, I don't advocate, you know, going along and telling, you know, uh, any real because all of them are equally wrong and equally uh, right for the most part. Like uh, because they come, they're just different branches of the same one tree. Well, yeah, and, they're all basically imprinted dramas or imprinted uh, that became rituals. In but order to soothe it, and they're connected through or this timeline, it. and literally chron- the chron- the chronology of of, <laughs> yes. of everything mm-hmm. being tied back to the timeline. The timeline is a tree. We want it to be a line, but it's actually a big tree. It's a very interesting, uh, ob- uh, you know, it's not a symmetric tree because uh, some cultures spend a lot of time in the same subjects. And they probably have a lot of uh, these side branches and stuff. And other ones grew and grew and grew and grew and boom, out pops the internet. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it seems to even Ramon that that's what Akhenaten was dealing with because he reset the quote unquote religion, if you will, back to the worship of Aten, which if you look at it, it's a solar disk. It looks like there's rays coming down, but no, it looks like uh, a tomb on the cosmic mountain where everybody's fighting in at war. They're in warlike mindset. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna reset backwards to the what we'll call the golden age when there was peace. Um, though it didn't fly very yeah, well. Yeah, they killed like, him for that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. He's, he's like the first Jesus walking whole, around. Hey guys, I have a great idea. No, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Stop this yeah. you're right. Time to stop and chill and we're fighting and I guess there's a couple of pharaohs that didn't have those stories of the Duat and all that stuff in their tombs, but then it went right back to it. It seems like, you know, okay, no, we're, we're fighting, you know, we're, we're going at it, you know. That, that King Solomon's like reign was like it, that as well. We're talking about, all right, let's go back to chilling and just the you know, and everything is peaceful. And everybody else was like, no, what do you mean? You know, so it's really, just, we're on the same page with this, it's like, seeing it now well it's a problem it's a it's a problem we still have the assumption um to this very day that 
for some reason we think a king is going to work out. We have movies like Return of the King or The Lion King. And uh, the belief – it's in The Lion King, right? When he shows back up, when the sun shows up, this is a transfer of power motif. He denied his power. When he comes back, the land is decimated. So the fertility god uh, was not held in, in place uh, like a solid rock to keep everything alive. But for some reason we believe it. But it's, despite all – any research on the matter, of course, uh, authority, power corrupting absolutely – we know this from a science from the scientific period, but the 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 culture is ingrained with the belief that you need that central authority figure, and we haven't figured out a way to unlearn that yet. That's a, that is because we keep telling that story over and over, and when in, whenever we violate that story, uh, people don't go to the they won't go to the theater and see it. They don't, or they'll they'll write terrible things about it or whatever because it violates something sacrosanct to our cultures um, around the world. And and how are we going to engineer out of that? I, I don't know. Um, but uh, maybe it has something to do with the technology. I wasn't trying to, to get into how the technocracy could either help or hurt. But um, the timeline is only important. It's not actually that important that we be super concrete because no one's ever going to agree. No two archaeologists are going to agree. No two carbon daters are going to agree. No one's going to agree. But what we can do is by extending the timeline, we can insert these events and show this uh, repetition of uh, – it's not really a cycle, but like this event renewed people. They behaved a certain way. This is These things branched out from it and then trace the motifs back to their origins so that we can understand – what religion has really done for us and what hasn't it done for us or how has it hurt us? Um, because it does, it, ha it has great things that have, that have happened because the way people behave during the transition period or during the, I'm sorry, the end of the megalithic period was pretty um, horrible. There was basically endless war everywhere and there were still kings because the king, kingship went way on back to the Saturnian motif. Um, it's it just, where we get it crowns become, from, yeah. It had you been, it had been corrupted. Yes, it had been totally um, – it had become t uh, corrupted as an idea, but it still existed, and it still exists. Well, there was uh, a long period of time when the plants that were had to make a big change and become plants that are now. And during that transition period, the only thing that was around and – you know, available to eat were animals, and you'd have to invade somebody else's territory to take their animals so that you could survive. Sure, plunder economy definitely I got its that. got its yeah. origins in yeah. the megalithic period. Um, uh, there's no there's no evidence of war before the megalithic period, so we don't have any examples from the archaic period of uh, True, true war, like tribalistic, big battles, and lots of people dead. So, the, I guess the scarcity of resources um, may have driven people, but it could have also been them seeing the clash of the gods in the sky, then learning, oh, that means it's okay. But we all know, you, you all of us agree that that the only time violence is is okay is when it's in defense of yourself and of of others. But but back then they were thinking, oh, so that's how it should be done. <laughs> well, yeah, or, it would also explain the, how the Valkyries, wonder. for example, um, and stuff like that, where people were and and there's actually depictions of uh, some some questions are even happening where, like, uh, uh, for example, John Cook actually had a question on whether or not some of these events that were depicted, like wars between the Hittites and the um, and the Egyptians, that were depicted all over these walls are actually not just meteor showers and the depictions of warriors because that's the, the what the images were they were look like like a whole whack of uh, valkyries traveling towards another group trying to kill them and this the, this would cause people to i mean these people take these signs very seriously to the i mean it changes in the sky mean the world i mean they're all i mean after 3100 BC i mean uh, if there were that almost killed everything in the world, so they're ready to um, 
do not screw with us. We're on the we're on edge at all times. If you think right now is bad, they were always like that. Religion well, is was, what kept them in order. Ritual kept 5, them in order. Thousand years, right? Dude, well, the, the question it is, been, it had been ongoing for five thousand years. That's why yeah, they were always looking normal. up at the sky. Yeah. No, well, it's not well. Yeah, no, no, but, but it went crazy. Them, it totally when I, I'm talking about when these things came close and started blowing hot chunks of the planet. Yeah, and we got yes, really scared of that. Well, well yeah, obviously, it, and and we became yeah, par like point. we freaked out, and and we we will freak out uh, if that, anything like that, like a nuclear war. You know, it, it's just it's natural. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and it's, it's crazy you now because it's, 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 what cultures were doing too was mixing the mythology into their own history. So that yes. all this controversy comes up. Whether the Hittites win or the Egyptians win, they both say they won. They both can't win. Exactly. Oh, they're mixing the mythology into the, their own history. And it, you know, oh. Or we're you know misinterpreting like, oh, it because hey. these are old languages, right? Yeah, because people aren't read. And, you know, that's, you know, the biblical story talk about is David or being ready colored and you see uh the kings of Egypt uh times they're red. Well nobody's red. You know what I mean? They're they're Adama. picking themselves as the Titans, Adama, like, so, sorry yeah, Sean. Adama? Yeah. In in in, like, in, in Sumeria, Adama was said to have red skin. Yeah. yeah. It's the mythology mixed into the history and then it makes it harder even to decipher the history because uh, what, I forget what the uh, Roman king died and he rose with the morning star. Damn it. Oh man, that's from the tip of my tongue too. And it's like, wait a minute. That's a myth. But yes. he, it's the same pretty much the same things that are being said in Egyptian uh history too. Like, oh I forget which Caesar it was, but he rose with the morning star and I'm like, um okay, you know? If they mix it together like that, that yeah, and, and know, Adama is the first human. Like, hmm. um, what I would say is regarding because one of the discussions has been, you know, which which way was it? Did the solar system? Um, you guys can hear me still, right? Yeah, of course. I'm okay. Whether the solar system uh, moved towards the sun or the sun and uh, moved it towards us, and was Jupiter with the sun as its binary, or was it with Saturn as its binary? I'm not sure that it actually uh, A can be uh, pulled apart, and B that it matters that much. Um, what what really matters is the uh, transition from a smaller star to a, a slightly bigger star, or it may be much bigger, according to them. You know, you can look on the Ramsey Stele to see how much bigger it looked to them, and you can see on those uh, on those petroglyphs uh, how big, how much bigger it looked. Yeah. Um, but then from that to our current sun, and the implications of that, swinging back to what Jim's been talking about with the spheres of influence. Yes, um, I think that that is a much more uh, pertinent way for us to tackle the the uh, chronology issue as far as the science goes, uh, because it might yield application. It might yield something uh, important to know about our uh, our universe that we we're not currently understanding. Um, I like Jim's point that he recently made that. Uh, like beyond a certain distance, effectively, gravity just isn't going to exist, and uh, and yet we can't discount it. When when the, when they get in proximity, I'm sure when Saturn and Jupiter were near to each other, you could not discount gravity, uh, no more than you could discount their momentum. But uh, at a certain distance, th then the electromagnetism has to be. Uh, the way, and it seems to me so far, all we've come up with are the Berkeley currents. But there might be other inside I, ways. I, I submit for them that to influence. I submit that gravity doesn't exist outside of the heliopause. It's electrical forces that take over. It might not even be relevant, uh, even at that distance. I'll be honest with you. Like it might only be relevant. Uh, in the launching of a satellite, but not actually that relevant. Because when when or near 
or near you, you're saying near the the positive anode of the sun. Right. Well, because and, and it lessens as you go out. Right. As the as the Voyager crafts got further out, the trajectories that they had planned for these craft were violated by long yes. margins. That's so, called the Pioneer anomaly, and so forth. Yes. Yeah, and the the. Um, uh, of course, I I think it was probably the Byfield Brown effect, or the you know there's several other people have named, but Byfield Brown Brown was earlier. Um, They're just and, another particle out there in space that it, that is is yeah being yeah, they, ma manipulated by a Birkeland current yeah, or they, inside of a shell of a Birkeland current doing its thing. Well, we don't uh, we don't have to ascribe everything to a Birkeland current. What yeah. I'm saying is there's probably several different kinds of. Uh, modifications of electromagnetism, just as we see van der Waals forces, or an and, area of charge is what you're saying. Uh, you know, piezoelectricity, and we see um, uh, superconductivity. There's all these special ways of modifying the force and coming up with, and maybe gravity does belong to that. But if if gravity doesn't, and it's its own thing, it may just not be as relevant as as uh, they want it to be. Um, it's within a certain radius, probably very relevant. I think around the sun currently, we probably it's probably very relevant for the Earth. Uh, how around strange the sun. were these? Sorry, uh, Raymond. How strange were these trajectories, and um, where did they start taking place? Would be my question. Well, uh, you could look that up. It's, it would be something you could definitely find. Um, but but you're just to just to. But it's happening with Homo Moa had the same issue. Yes, right? uh, it, it was a very strange angle on that one. But it could have been, um, like, it, it could be what we were traveling towards down the pipe, as it were, or drug along towards. But I was also wondering about this idea that the um, the trajectories of the planets being uh, and the and the sphere of influence idea uh, really did hit home because uh, when you start hitting those two extremes, uh, we we know several extremes already. Uh, one is the Mercury anomaly. That's and of course the Pioneer anomaly. So Mercury has an anomaly with its orbit. Uh, the Pioneer anomaly, of course, satellites that are traveling towards the heliopause. A different thing happens with their apparent mass or something. Uh, as you said, by both the Brown effect could be anything, but this definitely off course. In addition, the Earth also has different areas of gravity as well. It's not constant all over well, the surface. We're not even talking about that. Okay, but to then that's true. Just to, but it does. It's true though. But um, Canada has very low gravity, for example. But there's also the effect of the tides, which the Sun, of course, has a much more significant gra gravitational pull on us than the Moon does. But yet, the Moon affects our tides a lot more. Well, that's that's because of the electrotidal lock. But at the same time, there you know, you go. Nobody, no one oh, wants no. to talk about that. Well, for God's sakes. The, the reason <laughs> the reason the Moon has a greater effect is because of the proximity. So, if you calculate yes. the forces, then the difference between one side of the Earth and the other for the Sun is not much different. So the tug that the, the oceans feel is almost the same. But because the moon is closer, the difference between one side and the other is much greater. And that's why you, you the moon has a much greater influence. It's not to do with the size, it's to do with the difference oh, between I was one actually, side of the earth and the other. I was actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, I was, if I'm wrong, I apologize. I still was informed or under the impression that there was still more pull from the sun uh, on the Earth, there was on, from the Moon, and I apologize if I was misrepresenting. No, anything. you're right. You're right. But the difference is, if you imagine the Earth is a sphere, so you have two sides. The yes. difference is the Sun pulls both of those sides of the ocean with the same amount of force, whereas the difference between the Moon is the fact that the the side that is closest to the to the Moon, the ocean, will feel a greater force than the opposite side. So that is that is where the effect of the the tides come comes from is it's the the um, the difference between one side of the, the globe and the other right it's the same as taking I a straw see. blowing blowing on a puddle of water it's the opposite effect it's pulling water up towards the moon instead of pushing it down to the yeah it's you know. exactly it's the difference between the two yeah no it, may, it makes more sense i like i like that um thank you for explaining that to me actually because that prevents me from having any issue with that anymore because that was lingering in my brain for like five years. But um, because of th there's discussion about obviously um, charges and basically one of the last one of these anomalies that comes up then 
uh, is uh, the trajectory of some satellites where we get errant um, changes in trajectory. Uh, and of course, uh, automatically there is uh, thoughts uh, that come up between, uh, are you passing through a shell? Uh, uh, one of these plasma shells, and therefore you're in a different uh, electrogravitic state. I'll put in uh, quotation marks because I have no word for it. But if you get my meaning, that that uh, seems to the, the, this seems to be true. We have to take that into account that this weird thing is going to happen. Um, that, and a calendar of se uh, 270 days proves we're closer to the sun in the ancient past. Sorry, go ahead, Neil. Actually, I wasn't going to bring that up, but you're probably right there too. But anyway, um, those were just the things that popped in my mind when we talk about these kind of uh, enigmas in the sphere of influence of gravity. That's all. What are the and I'm wrong? sorry for and, I, and I'm sorry for popping in so often. But if I don't pop in when I when I need to, I lose the train and. I'll just be sitting here saying nothing. So I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> um, I, I didn't have anything more at this time to add about um, the chronology or the origins of religions other than what, what I've said. Um, I, I, oh, that I was proposed, a wonderful paper. I, I propose in the conclusion of the plasma petroglyphs uh, at one possible breakdown based upon the idea and the only reason i use the moon uh as the as the main sphere is, is the only two reasons one is that it has uh, two faces like janus and uh two is it's close enough to have such a, a a massive effect on us but obviously there's no doubting that mars and venus could have possibly also come close enough to uh to do do some damage um, Just from gravity alone, you're certainly right. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I mean, there's I all sorts of possibilities. Got, I submit that we got God when we saw the mammoth die off, about 12,900 BC. <laughs> yeah, it, well, I can tell you, we kept seeing, we kept getting God, and the the a lot of the boundary. Uh, well, before dating, that, it was just all, beautiful stuff in the sky, right? Uh, if you could see a anything. lot of the bound, a lot of the boundary dating on these mound cultures line up with. Uh, let's say a comet event in the historic period, uh, or with uh, the Velikovskian dates for the Martian event, or for the Venetian event, uh, or for the, I guess, pretty well argued um, dating for the deluge, but definitely good dating surrounding, you know, uh, Sumerian and Babylonian locations. Well, the oil uh, was doing, and the change of the pole. Maybe those well, influences had something to do with the, whole, with the change of the pole. That's a whole other ball that's game. A whole bag of, that's a whole bag of worms that go down there. But I can say that um, when they would when they would encounter when these events would happen, they would re-add dirt or add stone or make changes, do do renovations. The question is, yes. why would some pharaoh randomly want to renovate? We have assumed that it's vanity. But that is a stupid reason to try and almost kill your your uh, country's economy. Yeah, just because uh, we labor. just because we're idiots now doesn't mean they were idiots then. Right, because well, <laughs> they didn't have fractional reserve economy, so all of their money was based on whatever they had plundered or made in the past. We have work works projects that are based on GDP that's supposed to come in, and so or we're whatever. making a we're making a a, a value assumption that that's a uh, definitely postmodern in their time it would have been a real pain in the ass to build uh something like cahokia or great serpent mound or giza it would have required uh, so much attention it would have been politically possibly suicide for anybody to undergo it because their rivals could use it against them um and it was yet, all they, about the two g's didn't. gold and grain yeah, but again, those things can run out if you are building. The the art of war says very specifically that war itself is is uh, going to cost you in any nation that loves too much war. So how was Egypt getting the money for all these works projects? Um, it would have. No, I'm talking about been physical gold different. and physical grain. That's all. Yeah, I'm talking about that too. The, you you can't just get golden grain. You've got the, all the logistics. You've got the 
you got to maintain people's interest in the project because, like, look at what happened when the Emperor Qin died. They stopped making that pyramid. It would have been the biggest pyramid in the world. They stopped making it immediately because they didn't have a tyrant anymore to who would have killed them off. I mean, the, the Great Wall of China uh, was a mass death. A tyrant made that happen. And it was it was all within a very short period of time. It was, of course, actually just a renovation of an older an older uh, uh, edifice. But the basic thing is to you try have... and keep the dinosaurs out. <laughs> yeah, keep the dinosaurs out. <laughs> There's another wall like that down in India that we've recently yeah, talked yeah, about. That that's that's true. Um, and I think that's how humanity survived during these times with the dinos. They what? found a place. Well, I, I you don't think? know what you. Uh, yeah. I don't think that. Uh, don't, don't get me know. wrong. Hi hiding from things in the sky, though, uh, when they, especially a shockwave they saw coming. Now that I can believe. I can yeah. believe that 100%. I, I, I don't see any evidence of us being with dinosaurs, but I can say that we... South America, it's carved on stone. We Humans survived. Dinosaurs well, no, no, but we saw that, but we're not sure of that. But don't get me wrong. Yeah. We could have an argument about that sometime, too. If we, 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 we survived <laughs> these dangerous events, and every time when they would happen, there would be a re return of fervor. Now, uh, the question is, is, has this recent rise of fervor, is it just about the Mayan prophecies, or is it that we all sense it's about time? I don't know the answer to that. I, I did some analysis on we do love into the world media a lot right now, more than, uh, say, 100 years ago. Right. Um, we have developed one of the weapons of the gods. Uh, we are uh, spending inordinate amounts of money on, on it and on the assumption that it's about to happen. Whether – we don't have any proof. And as Jim's pointed out, there's not really any true – repetitious cycle to this it's like not you can't calculate it right to the moment um but i think what we're interested in now that we have the internet is everybody's like what are these stories and what do they really mean and what can we learn from it i don't think that we need to know the exact date and when jupiter arrived into the solar system it's an interesting idea because some people have said 9000 bc and some 3000 bc and I, there's no way to prove it there's just no way um, well, I mean, I it, it's hard enough to prove. On it, honestly. It's hard enough to prove that the people, to the people in academia, that plants can move. So yeah. let's yeah. not even. I mean, just but, at that alone. I mean, yeah. planets can move, and the universe is electric. Now go look at all your mythology again. You could just say that in a very short sentence. That would be a nice thing to get out there. But, but that, if you take anything away from that, I mean, uh, just, I mean. Ganesh, the people, the, all the multi arm people, why you transferred cross symbols to different gods, like all of that. Why were you doing that? What kind of behavior is that for? Uh, it's 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 the, a mind boggling amount of effort. Uh, uh, these cathedrals there were. Go, so. There you go, Neil. <laughs> that's, yeah, there, that's, you uh, go. there, there you go. Perfect. That's um, how it's done. That's how it's done right there. Let's, let's just rope it in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've said my my piece on the um, relation of the chronology and the religion, and how we, whenever we discuss it, uh, it seems like people leave out the discussion of uh, the religions and and the transition period. Um, and I don't, I think that would be a huge mistake to to just approach it in like, okay, this was stamped here, and somebody wrote this here, and then it's then it's just as big as big a jumble as the. Anthropology, which is well, essentially a bunch true. of specialists who don't ever t work with each other, right? If you leave religions out, then you don't start hurting feelings. That's what their approach is. I'm yeah, guessing. yeah, but it's that that is the I think the disrespectful way because uh, then all the small minorities that the smallest tribes their their voices become lost exactly in in a tempest of only the biggest cultures. Actually, I was, about to, I was about to describe that situation where the internet, if nothing else, I mean, someone said, what can we do with the internet? We can put the, our recipes online. Okay, that's basically, uh, you know, where we started off this, technical documents transferred between experts. But now, if everyone can tell their story, everyone has, well, a, I mean, no, every culture in the world can tell their story because someone yep. wants to preserve it, that's what I meant. And somebody yep. just goes, Grandma, talking to this speaker and talk to me. 
you know, or tell this tale again or anything like that. The fact that or we have our them symbols all... symbols match your symbols. Well, that's where I was going. That The fact is, is that all of these exact symbols repeat and repeat and repeat. If they are repeating and, uh, and they are cross... I mean, different stories from across culture, then if nothing else, we prove that they are looking at something but not communicating. And that alone is another big step forward. Right, and we just we the, the symbols might not be exactly the same, i.e., look at the difference between the symbols down in in Australia in the dream time, as opposed to some of the symbols in the northern hemisphere. They're, they seem to be way more energetic down in the southern hemisphere and less energetic in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? Any thoughts on the reason why that is? Yeah, because the auroras were much more powerful in the southern hemisphere. Uh, the southern hemisphere has two inches of soil. The northern hemisphere has ten inches of soil on average, um, and a lot of the bottom parts of the southern parts of the planet were more stripped clean. They talked about the skies being during the dream time, right above their heads. So, uh, right, right. Yeah, I mean, there's they were they survived something that was uh, very hard to deal with. Then, of course, we have the transition area uh, in the tropics and then in the northern hemisphere. That is why when things left, they went to the south. The south is crossing the rings, if the rings indeed were there. And then out across the river, you follow the boatman, Sharon, and he will take you to the land of the dead, where Hades ruled all the way out there. Now, that's to the south from our point of view because we're spinning on a globe and if you look to the to the southwards or it becomes outwards away from the sun away from you know that's where the gods went to die but northwards where there's something sticking out of the top of our planet if that was the case then then that would be archetypical heaven or mount olympus or whatever so you get the heaven and the land of the dead all in one picture the uh it's uh, but only from the northern hemisphere. That's why oh, yeah, when you go are, below it, it none of those those stories hold true. It seems like we're looking at our heliosphere lit up in glow mode. Uh, I don't think it was the heliosphere. I think it's our. I think it was much more local to the Earth. Uh, but you know what? Sorry, sorry. I meant magnetosphere. Sorry. Oh well, then that would be true. Yes, that is literally all it is. As a, a Whenever the aurora itself is just the most concentrated area of the, our magnetic field lines, which allow us to see that glow, that's all it is. There's nothing, but if we could, we could see the whole thing. That would be fantastic. Well, it would scare the crap out of us. We'd see the Van Allen belts right there as a big red ring right around the planet. You know, uh, it's, uh, it would be revealing. And we'd, if we could even see the structure of space alone, uh, none, of, none of these questions would even be there. Would, would, would the Van Allen belts be the river sticks well, instead if, of if, physical rings of ice chunks? Well, I would, I would think just debris chunks, but we were traveling through a lot of debris and we would collect it over time. Um, uh, in fact, there, was, there seems to be so much that the sky, like, like we saw this, the sun was kind of reddish, like there was so much there. And that couldn't have been just atmospheric dust thrown up by some hits. It had to be extra galactic. Yeah, there, well, there was some well, sorry, sorry, in there, extra, sure, but extra planetary. Like the majority of it would have been water from the connection between us when it broke, I would think. <laughs> That's like, assuming like that Saturn. was the case. Uh, I, I mean, we know that rings and we lost them because of the moon. Well, we know that there's an asteroid belt and assuming something blew the heck up. And once we settled down into a similar orbit, all the dust would also be brought into this orbit and our tails would be going through it over and over again, cleaning it away. When, I mean, the area between the Earth and the sun was pretty much cleaned by Venus's tail. And we were quite happy for that because it made the sun brighter. But is that, you know, is that something that we can uh, date exactly? Uh, we do know that the sun did look red for a time, uh, but uh, we do know that uh, uh, the, that's why it was the, not the first sun. The first sun was brighter and above our heads, you know, and, and stationary on, a moving, on an unmoving pole. 
Those, these the emotionalists, are, yeah. Yeah, this, this, is, this is official madness, really, because it's, it's hard to even fathom what that w concept would look like. But, I mean, it, I can envision what it looks like, but to, to it cannot be, it almost is so prevalent a tale, the, 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 I mean, the Jack and the Beanstalk type of story, you know, the giant up there, and then, of course, the guy does the Perseus thing and kills the giant, yada, yada, yada. You know, uh, it's just what these are. It's like they're constantly telling the tales from the past. And it, if we can't listen to it, then and we can't. Uh, we're, we're certainly able to well, now at least separate certain things from this other age, which now we can realize is uh, the symbol itself and the petroglyph dating has to be much older. Uh, and it's a whole new spin on things. Well, that's one reason I personally am not a fan of postmodernism because we go back and we deconstruct the past, but then then filter it through our understanding since the atomic model, which is a major mistake uh, to uh, to look at the myths that way, and and then also to go, oh, we don't need the imperial units anymore, and we don't. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter uh, which uh, god it is, you know, and Hela can be the sister of Thor. It's just, it's all, you know, kind of uh, garbage. And it, it's a danger because the youth don't know even the basics that, that this, uh, you know, Thor Ragnarok story. Uh, it's even worse the, than that. The real Thor Ragnarok was actually something that happened. <laughs> well, no, no, wait, you're, well, you're it's absolutely Wonder right. Woman and but, Thor actually. Well, hold on, hold on. But you're absolutely I'm right in the sense that that, that these these symbols, these uh, these this 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 these tales are not being told. And you're right. You're right. They're they, they're like now they're becoming Trekkies or Star Wars fans or whatever. They're completely fractured, and that is one of the dangers. I mean, I used to laugh in the 1980s and 90s i would say probably 90s to that it's like well this like you know no it's herculean what do you mean by that and i explained someone classical greek myth like what that meant like the term uh you know and why we use those words and that's basically because of the classical training and the resurgence of the 19 or the 1800s and such with uh with greek culture and so forth making it the grand tour of europe ends with going through greece and rome and so forth now that type of upper crust culture filtered down to everyone learning the classics and so on this is these are things that we had to learn you know uh, Odysseus and the odyssey and all this other wonderful stuff but if we're there at that point then everyone still knew the Christian stuff. Like I, could, like, I could, I could relate it with that. But now, the youth of after 9-11 onwards, uh, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not really sure if they've ever been taught that. Like, if I, you have no links to each other, maybe this is how things like the flat earth comes out. You Their know? response will be, uh, that's a movie, man. That's not real. Sadly, you may be correct. Uh, Rob, before we go, then Robert, see the pattern, or Gareth, I guess, Sean, Buddy, do you guys have uh, Chris? Anything to add? Uh, oh, something we might want to talk you, about? Because I want to talk about it. you nailed it. You nailed it. The post nine eleven kids uh, educational system in America at least keep changing. I used to compare textbooks of my uh, cousins and nephews or whatever they graduated like around 2000, 2001, 2002. And I was like, oh my goodness, you guys are starting history with American history. You're not even, you don't know nothing about the dark ages. You, oh my, like, you know, this is condensed and it's not, oh, you don't know anything. Seriously, it, 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 it's completely different. Um, so that's only, you know, from millennials to generation X. They're not being taught the same way I was. And I, so I came out of high school in 87. Kids that came out of school in 2000, 2001, 2002 have no clue. And I'm like, oh my, that's not that much time. You know, and as soon as I got to college, you know, they're going right into you know, history 151. 
it went right into Greek literature, like right to it, to me. And it was like, if you don't know anything about it, you'll just be totally lost. Totally lost. So this is why. Well, yeah, know, because everyone who wrote any book ideas. knew that stuff. Yeah. So the, you're going to have to know the references. Yeah. Well, when did, when yeah, did the history, up. sorry, when did the history channel start changing its format and, and become uh, a, 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 an epic uh, fantasy show? instead of presenting real true history and, yeah i have no idea like, how that little, happened little side little side shows of you know them going into a, a museum and, and showing artifacts that's that's crap give us the true history like you used to do what back in bef before 2000 well yeah it's it's what you're building but anyway uh so we've heard from richard uh uh i guess sean uh Let's go with uh, Chris. Anything from you? Um, it's going back a bit when we were talking about tidal forces and gravity. Uh, I remember there was something I saw with Belikovsky saying that, that harbor masters don't care where the moon and the sun is to judge tidal times. They go by historical records. Does anyone remember that? I honestly do not. Uh, what Was it in a video or... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in an interview. I'm oh. sorry, my yeah, memory's not that great. But um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an aside point. Uh, I was thinking about axial tilts. I don't know if we covered that at any point. Well, you, uh, no, we didn't actually, uh, but there is evidence for slight axial tilts, yeah. But uh, as Gareth had pointed out very eloquently in, in Jim's video there when he put together, it's... Uh, it's harder to explain. There are uh, actually, and I have a request, if people find the citations that Velikovsky was using about the water clocks and um, uh, the slight changes in, in the Middle East to uh, the orientation of north in megalithic structures, anything to do with that, please pass it to myself, and I bet Jim would like a copy as well because it relates to his uh, uh, hypothesis, but I'm interested in the calendrical changes that are caused by that. But uh, biologically speaking, we uh, do know that, that uh, there are plants that are no longer found uh, in Siberia that used to be found there. And we know that because those plants are in the bellies of frozen mammoths. And, um, and they, they've been able to uh, test them and see their DNA and to know exactly which species and they're existing now thousands of miles south of where they used to exist. But uh, if anybody finds the, the actual studies relating to the water clocks and their precision uh, still being intact but their accuracy being off, uh, please give me uh, copies because that's the kind of stuff that needs to go into my work into these giant tables that I create so that we can access that later when we need it. 